Okay, the webinar is now live. Great. <clears throat> Um, I am calling to order the regular bi-monthly meeting of the Board of Directors for Marin Municipal Water District for um, Tuesday, April 20th, 2021. Our first um, order of business is um, the roll call. Director Bragman. Aye. Director Gibson. Aye. Director Russell. Oh, it. Director Schmidt. Aye. And President Kohler. Here. Um, I'm now looking for a motion to adopt the agenda. Move approval. Second. Second. Great. Then we're looking for a roll call vote, Terry. Director Bragman. Aye. Director Gibson. Aye. Director Schmidt. Aye. And President Kohler. Aye. Um, okay. I'm now going to convene the meeting to close session. We will do... Um, public comment on items not on the agenda when we reconvene to, public, to open session. And um, so we need to, I guess, stop the recording now. Yeah, we yes. We will let everyone know, President Kohler, that uh, we'll be convening to open session approximately 7.30. So those of us, um, those, those of the attendees who are joining um, now would want to uh, log back into the Zoom at 7.30, but we are going to have to kick them out for the closed session. Right, it does look like people were confused. We've got about 30 um, attendees. So let me just say to you, I'm sorry for any confusion. Um, we're going to close session to deal with items that are not on the public agenda. Um, and I apologize for that confusion. We will be reconvening at 730. So thank you for joining us again at that time. See you, Larry. Do you want us to see you before we get going? Larry Russell? I don't care. I don't care. I am positive. Okay. We are reconvening the regular bi-monthly meeting of the Board of Directors for Marin Water for April 20th, 2021. For all of you who joined us earlier when we were going to closed session, I apologize again for that inconvenience. Um, our closed session um, has, has um, ended without any reportable action. Um, that brings us to the next item on the agenda, which is public comment on any item which is not on the agenda. I know we have a large number of um, attendees this evening um, and that's fantastic. I wanna be very clear that this is the moment for you to comment only on things that are not on the agenda. So if you are here about the, um, the, uh, the drought update um, or anything else on the agenda, please hold your comments until those agenda items. So with that, Terry, do we have public item comment on items that are not on the agenda? I see a hand raised, Laura Charlton. So I'm gonna allow to speak. Great. Go yeah. ahead. Hi, thank you, uh, board of directors and uh, chair Cynthia Kohler. Um, I was um, concerned about a few things and um, the main thing is a safety issue I'm calling about. Uh, my husband and I went for a hike um, this evening and we were um, practically run off the hogback by two cyclists going full speed, not slowing down. And um, they thought they had a right to do that was their final determination. Um, if anyone's been on the hogback, it's very steep and it was terrifying. I had to jump out of the way. And um, the rest of my hike was looking over my shoulder and wondering if I was gonna have another encounter. And I no longer enjoy hiking on the mountain um, before I go out, I have a lot of stress um, and wonder if this is going to be the time when someone takes me out. Um, you guys need to do something about it. I'm not alone. Um, anyway, then the other thing is I've been getting emails, but they have nothing in them. I've signed up for every single, you know, or almost every item to be notified, but there's, I open the emails and there's nothing in them from uh, Marin Water. And then I have another uh, thing to bring up, but I'll, I'll do it offline. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next speaker I have is Howard. Go ahead, Howard. Can you hear me? We can hear yes. you. Yes. Okay. I, I just tuned in a second late, so I'm not sure. Are you on the portion yet about the uh, water restrictions? No, no, if your comment is on that, do you mind my, this is Cynthia, the, uh, the board 
Um, President, um, so this is the time for public comment on items that are not on the agenda. So if oh, you have a okay. comment on an agendized item, I'm just going to ask you to wait until that item comes up, okay? Okay, thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Howard. Any other comments on items not on the agenda? There aren't any more raised hands. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody. Um, that brings us to our next agenda item, which is director and general manager's announcements. Let's start with the directors. Any director's announcements? Uh, just two brief ones. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be addressing the Kentwood Homeowners Association this week on the 22nd, which I'm kind of looking forward to. And then Ross Council, May 13th, I appeared uh, with Carrie uh, in front of Fairfax and thought it went really well. And I'm um, looking forward. I think that's it's important for us to be working with our municipal partners. So uh, really appreciate staff support there and um, hope you guys also get the chance to, to do the same. Great, absolutely. Any other director's announcements? Um, I just have one quick one and maybe everybody's already aware of this, but I just wanna do a quick shout out as everybody knows um, the America Jobs Plan Act, um, I mean, uh, plan I should say, um, calls for about 1100 billion in water and wastewater infrastructure spending by the federal government. And um, our, I'm just very pleased to share that um, Congressman DeFazio has introduced a bill um, in the House that our um, local representative, Jared Huffman, has co-sponsored that is a start in implementing that with $50 billion. So um, it's, a, it's a great beginning and, uh, and hopefully that will move forward. Ben, anything from you? I do not have any of this evening, President Kohler. Great. That brings us to the consent calendar. Do I have a motion on the consent calendar? And move approval. Second. Do we have any public comment on the consent calendar before we have a roll call vote? There are none. Okay. Roll call. Director Bregman? Aye. Director Gibson? Aye. Director Russell? Dr. Aye. Russell, Aye. Director Schmidt. Aye. And President Kohler. Aye. So that brings us to our regular calendar. And I think the item of the evening, which is the drought update, I just want to spend a quick minute um, outlining for everybody who is attending about the plan here. There are three different items to approve um, on this item. So the way that we are going to go, especially since there's a lot of public interest, is I'm going to ask everybody, um, board and attendees, to let the staff go all the way through their, um, their presentation. Um, it's not that long. And um, I think we'll be um, in much better shape if we let them get all the way through it before we comment. Um, and at that point, I will open it up for board comments and then public comments. And then we will vote on each of the three items and the ordinance will be last. Um, so is there Kohler, I just, I, one, one quick um, nuance here. We do have a drought update on the regular calendar and then we have the public hearing with the approval items. So I think the drought update Sorry. will be really brief and then we can move into the public hearing. Sorry, Sorry about that. I jumped the gun. All right, anyway, well, you all know how we're going to proceed then. <laughs> so it's, still, that, it's still true, right? <laughs> so with that, I will let the board first give the drought update and then we will proceed as I've outlined on the public hearing. Thanks, all right, go ahead. Okay, Lucy Croy is gonna give us the drought update. We'll start with Lucy. Okay, good evening, board of directors, Lucy Croy, water quality manager. I'm going to bring up my screen. Okay, so this evening we have a drought update for you on the efforts surrounding um, the dry conditions and the efforts behind the district um, with the droughts the last few months. Um, up first is Kent Reservoir. This is uh, taken just yesterday. Um, one of our lar this is our largest reservoir. Um, that's now at about 57% of capacity. Um, see. So tonight we are going to give an update on our water supply and drought conditions. Then we'll move into an update on our drought response, including our operational initiatives and water supply projects. Um, and then we'll touch on our public outreach and communications, and then we'll finish off with some proposed drought pro programs for our customers in the coming months. So first up is a review of our uh, total reservoir storage over the last um, few months. 
So um, as, of as of just this week, um, our reservoir storage is around 41,500 uh, acre feet. Um, we have been remaining relatively stable over the last few months, tracking downwards, um, but without much rainfall, we haven't been able to markedly jump upwards towards that average that you see um, towards the top of the screen up here. So now we are around um, just around 52% of our total capacity. Um, and that, that is about 43% from our average. So for this date um, in mid-April, we would expect to be around 30,000 acre feet higher than where we are right now on average. As far as rainfall goes, um, not much has changed in the last month. As you can see with this green line, this green line is um, the current rainfall to date through the, through the fiscal year. Um, our current total is 20.3 inches and um, we really have not received any rainfall in the last 30 days. Um, it looks like we'll receive a little bit of rain on Sunday, but as far as we know, it's about 0.3 inches. So um, still tracking around 41% 41, 41 of average for this year. And it, it's pretty low um, considering that last year was around 66% uh, of average. So these two years combined are, are really um, hitting our storage pretty severely. Lucy, this is Larry. I, I think we should indicate that 30,000 acre feet, the deficit you were talking about, is more than one year's total water usage. Yeah. So just to put things in perspective, it's a lot of water. That is, that is a significant amount of water. So moving into um, production, this is our monthly potable water production um, showing the last few months. Um, this month is March and you'll see that um, over the last January, February, March, we, we see a bit of variability in these first spring months, um, depending on the weather and depending on the rainfall. Um, we did see a decrease in February and March from 2020. Um, and we, we, we don't know whether that's rainfall or conservation yet, but we'll, see, we'll, we'll be tracking this in the coming months um, as the, the seasons kind of stabilize through the summer months. Um, let's see. So then moving into um, an average daily production, this is, this is a new table that we've put together thinking about the drought and the conservation savings that we've asked of our customers. Um, we wanted to start thinking about, you know, what are we seeing um, on a monthly basis and, and what is the daily production that we can be tracking. So um, looking back at 2013, our driest year on record, um, a similar year to 2020 and 2021, um, you can see that somewhat the production data is of million gallons per day, which is really how much our treatment plants are producing each day um, to meet the demand of our customers. Um, is similar throughout January and February. Um, and then in April, you see that we've, we've been very similar the last uh, two weeks. So this is just over the last two weeks, we've seen a little bit of an uptick and we don't quite know what to account that for, but we will continue to monitor that. And then this is a chart that you, um, you all are probably very familiar with, um, the black line showing our actual storage over the last, um, over a year, about uh, 16 months. Um, so this is our actual storage decreasing and then showing projection lines coming off um, just around April. So using the, um, the rainfall that we've been receiving and the runoff that, um, we expect through the, the summer months, which will be probably very negligible um, given that we haven't had much rain. We're expecting that um, right around the end of the summer months and into the fall will be around the 25,000 um, acre feet mark. Um, and the way this chart is set up is that it's, it's projecting our reservoir storage based on um, three different scenarios once we get into the next water year, the next rainy season. So, the lower um, orange line would be another year of pretty severe rainfall runoff of around 25%. Um, the blue line would be around 50% of average. And then our, the green line um, just up above would be our average. So if we were to re receive our average rainfall, we would see, see us jump right back up to around um, 55,000 acre feet, which still um, is not quite adequate for what we would hope. Um, 
come next April. Um, and then on this chart, what we've also shown in the blue solid line is, is a 40% savings from conservation, um, what we're asking our customers over the next few months, um, and, and what that impact can do for our storage um, and really keep us above um, in, a, in a safer place and extend our water supply um, in the coming months, in the coming years, um, so that we can maintain uh, water supply through a longer period. So, and this, this is using a 50% of average rainfall um, forecast. So then moving into our drought response, um, operational initiatives and water supply projects that have been ongoing. Um, first up. So first and foremost is our conservation outreach, um, which has been very central to the district's approach in the last few months. Um, one second. Um, our conservation has really been about reaching out to our customers and local businesses. Um, to, to communicate about the dry conditions and to, to explain where our water supply is currently and where it could be in the coming months and in the coming year, um, given, where we, given where the weather could go um, next, next fall and winter season. Um, Carrie Pollard, our water efficiency manager, will be giving a more thorough update later in this presentation. Um, up here on the screen is Phoenix Lake, um, one of our smaller but more central uh, reservoirs that we rarely use, but um, we have used this year um, due to the drought and used about 330 acre feet and pumped it up to um, Bon Tempe treatment plant. Um, but we've completed that operational initiative um, at this point and you can see that it's, it's been drawn down quite a bit. Um, the other rarely used reservoir in our system is Sulhuli Reservoir. Um, in February, the board approved moving ahead with the rental of a temporary gentle generator out there. Um, and just last week, we, uh, the, the, gener the temporary generators were delivered to the pump station. Um, and we are working on, staff is working on setting up the controls to remotely start and set up those, those generators. And then right now the, the plan is to test those generators come next week. Um, we're continuing to optimize our supplemental supply. Um, as of the mid, as of mid-April, we have used about 113% of our normal annual allotment from uh, Sonoma County Water Agency. So taking as much as we can um, from, from the north uh, to extend our local supply. Um, there are some restrictions in the North Marin Aqueduct, so we've been restricted over the, the first few weeks of April to around 4 million gallons per day as uh, North Marin is still backfilling uh, Stafford Lake. So we're hoping to be able to increase that take in probably the end of, the end of April, moving into May. I did um, want to note, um, if I could, um, that we are... Um, expecting Sonoma County Water, who is also experiencing um, low reservoirs to curtail um, all the retailers, including us, in terms of our normal allotment. So um, our recycled water uh, system, there, there's currently an upgrade at Las Galinas uh, recycled water treatment plant. Um, and that upgrade has been ongoing. They're, they're still currently working on the reliability testing and we, we've been pre periodically receiving water, um, but there's, there's been some back and forth and we're, we're continuing to work with our staff there and, 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 and see how much um, we can get in the next couple of weeks, um, working through any issues in their, in their first initial testing and distribution of that water into our system. Um, and then moving into, oh, and then uh, the residential pickup where we're looking at, um, we're looking at sites and, um, and the permits needed to, um, to develop a, a facility um, for residential pickup of recycled water. So um, we've reached out to some regulators as well and we'll be pursuing that in the coming months um, to help with any kind of restrictions on irrigation. 
And then leak detection, we're continuing to look into ways to enhance and improve our current system. Um, continuing discussions with other utilities um, on technology and what's feasible and what's um, cost effective to um, improve our current system. Um, water supply projects that have been ongoing for the past few months include Castania Pump Station Rehab. This is the pump station that um, connects us to our supplemental supply. Um, we're continuing our pre-design efforts to, um, to do the rehab we brought to the board on April 6th, um, the, the proposal to move ahead with the rehab um, and get that pump station up and going in the next seven months. And so they are continuing with those efforts. And then with environmental releases, um, the board approved moving ahead with a technical study to look at our environmental releases um, in critically dry years. And um, staff is moving ahead with that study and working very, uh, very closely with stakeholders um, throughout the coming months. And then lastly is the consideration of multi-year drought programs, drought, drought pro projects. Um, this really is you know, looking ahead, looking through October, November, if we start to hit um, continued dry periods, um, what is needed to continue um, serving our customers and what, what water supply, where can we, we get that from? So looking at projects for temporary desalination or water transfers from other regions or agencies that are available to us, so. So Lucy, before you go on, can you just tell us quickly, when you say water transfers, are, what, what agencies are we talking about? Primarily North Bay, or are you talking about um, East Bay? Um, also talking about East Bay as well, East Bay Mud. Okay. Right, wheeled through East Bay Mud, um, we're currently looking into um, state water project um, contractors, generally farmers who may be willing to sell some allotments. They've been curtailed as well. Both of these are certainly complex projects that um, wouldn't move ahead until, as Lucy, Lucy noted, um, we were in a further drought situation if the coming wet season didn't um, you know, show an average year of rainfall. Thanks, Ben. Okay, so now moving into the, the second large piece of our drought response, which has been our public outreach and communications, I'm gonna hand it off to Carrie Pollard, our water efficiency manager. Thank you, Lucy. Good evening, board. Carrie Pollard, water efficiency manager. So we're gonna start with the outreach um, section. This is a slide you're all familiar with. It's what we've been using to track the progress through um, the various outreach um, that we've been doing. We're really gonna focus in on the upcoming items, starting with the community water watch team. So this is a component of our campaign that's focused on bringing awareness to our water waste prohibitions. So we've established a phone hotline, an email address, and an online form to provide um, accessibility for our, our community to notify us if they see water waste. We know that customers don't intentionally waste water um, but really having these tools available will be key to allow staff to provide focus education to members of the community who need it to really um, allow us to you know, achieve that goal of minimizing water waste. A few of the other items, I'm working on vehicle signage for all of uh, the district um, vehicles. Um, we have um, signage in the watershed that's been developed. So in our high traffic areas, we have some kiosks and that we put some signage up into to notify not only our customers, but visitors as well. Working on a direct mailer, this will be an informational piece that will be based on the mandatory restrictions that are being considered in a later item. So it's a uh, under development, obviously. Um, the banner signage. So there's um, some local communities have street banners that are part of their main thoroughfare. And so um, we've, we've reached out to them and there's interest in allowing us to put some signage up there as well. Um, a couple of the other items I skipped over, I'll touch on in a moment. Moving on to the targeted outreach, we continue to schedule various presentations. I also have a separate slide on that. And um, we're continuing to reach out to commercial sector specific folks. So that includes not only the restaurants um, with offering table tents, but also our hotels and uh, 
CLCA, the California Landscape Contractors Association, et cetera. We really want to bring those folks along with us as we, you know, talk about current water supply conditions and tools and resources that are out there to spread the word about, um, you know, our, our current ask. Next slide. Thank you. Jumping into a little deeper into the advertising campaign, I'll note um, first that the image there is, is one of our ads you, you should see out and about. We broke the campaign into two phases. Phase one launched a few weeks ago with newspaper print and digital ads. We also rolled out a digital display ad. So if you're just on various sites um, scrolling, you'll and in our service area, you'll see some of those ads pop up. The transit shelters and the bus ads will be staggered. They'll start in early May and they'll run for three months. So you'll start to see those out in the community as well. Phase two will really build on phase one and add some radio ads, the banners I mentioned, some outdoor kiosks at high traffic shopping centers and some video PSAs. Our social media advertising campaign continues to be quite effective. Since we first we launched in February, we've had um, over 124,000 um, reach, reaches, I guess. <laughs> the website reach um, is about 24,000. Um, this this is, is where we're directing all of our marketing materials, right? So it's marinwater.org slash conserve. And so it's great to see so many hits there. We've distributed um, more than 400 yard signs within the community. These yard signs are available either by reaching out to us via our website to, set, to schedule a pickup or they can be um, picked up at the farmer's market either on Sunday or Thursday. And um, we've also had a, a significant uptake in um, news media as well, as you can see there. Next slide. Thank you. Diving into our stakeholder outreach, um, we've, we've um, attended or participated in nine um, presentations. Uh, Director Bragman has mentioned a few. Um, and then you can see the extensive list of the upcoming presentations. We found that this has been a very effective way to, to have, um, you know, detailed one-on-one -on -one or you know one-on-one-ish conversations with small groups um, to really talk about water supply conditions, you know, why we're calling for conservation actions, what are the resources available and what tools are we are we offering to provide support. Um, and, and they've been very well received. So if there's any community groups out there who are interested in having a presentation, they can reach out to us via our website. Calls and emails into the water efficiency department continue to increase. We're on track to have a, a record month. Um, and we, we know that's going to continue to, to be um, the case. Next slide. Now I'm going to cover some proposed drought programs that staff is developing for our customers to support in drought response. These items will come back to the board for formal consideration on May 4th. At this point, it's just an information item so we can make sure that the board is, is aware of the programs that, that are being developed. Starting with the flume program, so um, Flume provides minute-by-minute -minute water use information to directly to your mobile device. Um, it's really easy to install. It just flips onto your meter and it connects to your Wi-Fi. Um, and then it provides customers real-time data, which is, which is great. Um, we've heard that there, according to the manufacturer, two out of three installations result in a discovered leak. And we've heard testimonials from our own, our own um, customers on the effectiveness of finding leaks with this device. And so we, we're really excited about having this, this offering um, available in the future. It will be a point of purchase discount. Um, the district will pay $115, the customer will pay 50, and we're fortunate to have received a Prop 1 grant, which will provide a $75 reimbursement as well. Next slide. Looking at some turf replacement programs, we're proposing to offer a $3 per square foot rebate for a limited time offer as part of our drought response. We'd ask customers to sign up and immediately stop irrigating their lawn, the area that they're, they're considering removing or that they're interested in removing. Staff will come out and measure and then um, you know, walk them through kind of the process of participating in the program. And then when the drought's over, then we notify the customer that, that we would you know, invite them to, to replant that area at that time um, as, an, as an option. Next one, next slide. The other turf replacement program that is being proposed will be a sheet mulching service. We'll provide a, a service free to customers where they can sign up, again, stop irrigating their lawn, and then 
Marin Waddle will contract with a local nonprofit to provide crews that will actually not only just deliver the material, but actually go to the site and sheet mulch the landscape, the, the lawn area. So that's providing compost, cardboard, and mulch, and then capping the overhead sprays as well. Once again, once the drought is over, we'd let the customer know and we would provide them some, some, some resources and tools to assist them in planting locally appropriate drought resistant landscaping. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and finally, a landscape area measurement project. And so um, the, the district is hiring a consultant to establish land use classifications for all residential and dedicated meter service areas within our service district. This will um, define uh, the square footage within each parcel uh, that contains or the amount of turf, pools, shrubs, and trees within these parcels. Following that, not, it, next slide, you see. Following that, we'll be able to assign a water budget for outdoor water use, and this will allow us to help educate our customers that um, that may be, you know, not using water as efficiently as we'd like. And the way we would do this is we would compare their bi-monthly reads to the water budget and send them a letter and notify them and offer our programs and assistance to to help, um, you know, bring them in a more aligned, closely aligned to the the type of landscape they have on their site. Next slide. So that the next steps will be to, of course, continue our drought efforts, um, continue the operational and water supply project that Lucy mentioned. And uh, once again, we'll return to the board on May 4th for approval and consideration of the projects that I mentioned, which are our initial drought um, programs that were, we've developed. Thank you. Oops, she froze. Carrie, could I ask a quick question on the turf replacement? Absolutely. Is that going to be available to commercial customers as well as residential? Yeah, it will be available to all customers. And as far as the, the sort of interim um, sheet mulching, um, is that available to commercial too? Yeah, we would make it available to all of our customers, right? Our goal is to provide those resources to get them to take action now. Okay, great. Great. It sounds good. So just to... Um... Uh, take, a, take a step back for a minute. I want to thank the staff <clears throat> for putting together a really comprehensive and very um, understandable um, presentation. Lucy, thank you for the extremely bad news you're giving us. No, it's, um, <laughs> you know, it's very helpful to have it laid out so clearly. And thank you, Carrie, for um, going through all these programs. Just a couple of comments on it. First, I'm really um, very pleased to see that we're proposing $3 a square foot for turf replacement. It sort of rivals um, or at least equates to roughly what I think they've been doing in Las Vegas for some time. So I think that's right. <clears throat> I think we need to get to that level to be incentivizing our customers. My one question about that, and this went quickly, did you say that once the drought is over, we'll let people know that they can replant? I'm not sure why we would do that. Um, I, I understand drought response is often seen as a short-term thing, but we really need to be thinking in terms of long-term drought resilience in the light of climate change. And you know, as, as you know better than almost anybody, we're, we really need to be planning for you know, longer term demand reduction and really seeing, um, you know, uh, conservation as a source of supply. So I'm not sure why we would be encouraging that. So can you speak to that? Yeah, so maybe a clarification there. We would encourage, we would notify them that they could replant low water use landscape in the area that had been formerly turf. Okay. Um, all right, but isn't the point of the $3 per square foot rebate to sub in low water landscaping? It is. So we would, so right now what they do is they have 90 days. It's, we have right now we have a $1 per square foot rebate, right? And they have 90 days to complete right. their project. What we're doing is saying, you know, instead of having them install that landscape within the 90 days, we'll give them a longer time period and ask them to not try and establish new plant material until after we're out of the drought, considering that we are giving them the $3 per square foot to really help us get us through this, this time that we need the, the, the drastic cutback. Okay. All right. So when we have this um, have this further conversation on May 14th, one thing we should be thinking about is how do we fold this kind of short-term response into a longer-term program to permanently build, be building our climate resilience and um, you know lowering our our demand um, you know for the long term. So um, it would be great to have a little bit more detail on that. Um, my second thought is, uh, well, just a comment and a question. Flume is a great, um, a great device. Um, I, I work with Flume in my other life and it's just a great company. I'm glad we're working with them. They've done some studies about their performance and 
water savings? Are you going to be able to bring forward some of that data um, at the next uh, the next time we consider this? We certainly can. Okay, I think that would be great. Um, and then I know we have a current program with Rachio, um, which is irrigation controllers, which I think is also really important. I mean, if most people are like me, and of course they are, um, uh, we're a lot of us over water the plants that we are watering. And that's um, one thing where I think Rachio is really an extraordinary um, product and helping people really home in and know exactly what they need to be using in different parts of their, their gardens. Um, are we planning to expand that in any way? At this time, it has not been developed, but I think it would be worth considering if that's something the board would like to pursue. Um, well, I'd like to hear from everybody else, but I'd like to hear on May 14th about a potential expansion of that program. Um, I think there's grant funding available for that, and it may be, again, a worthwhile long-term investment. <clears throat> and we've talked about this a little in the past. I mean, obviously, we want to be doing <clears throat> what we can to be responding to the immediate drought situation, but I think we also want to be using this this opportunity to invest in distributed infrastructure like this, including this kind of technology um, to, uh, you know, to address our, our longer term needs. Um, and then finally, can you talk a little bit about, you sort of went through it quickly, um, water budgets. Um, this may be a direction we want to go, and I'm wondering if we want to think about having some of our colleague um, uh, water utilities that have really um, experimented and very successfully with water budgets, if that's a direction we want to be considering maybe inviting one of them to do a, a presentation um, about how that has worked and what their performance rate has been. Yeah, we certainly can. Um, and I can, you know, a little bit more on it would be, you know, it's, it's something under development. And I think, you know, we have to keep in mind it's 60 days. It's always looking back on water use 60 days. And so it doesn't provide that real time information to let customers know how much water they're using as far as their drought response. Um, but I think it's good information that we can provide. And I think we can continue as we develop the language classifications and we figure out, you know, what, how, you know, what makes the most sense for us and hearing from others would, would, would be useful um, as we go down this path. Yeah, and that's, I think, a really important point for the public. <clears throat> and that's the direction that we're moving along with other water utilities is to provide that information in more real time by ramping up our, um, our automatic meter infrastructure program, AMI, so that people have the opportunity to get real-time information. That's really when these information devices are really gonna make a difference. You, you make a really strong point. Um, and of course, that's what Flume does. So um, the more that we can get that kind of real-time data into the hands of our, um, you know, our residents, our businesses, our institutions, our sister agencies, really the better. Um, that's, those are my comments. I wanna make sure that I'm turning to the rest of the board um, and for any other board, comments before I open up to public comments. Nope. Okay. Um, so I'm sure there are public, I'm sorry. Just one other, um, just to follow up on the, the whole data collection aspect of what we're doing. Um, and I mentioned this to Ben is as we go through this, I think it's important to get information more rapidly than our 60 day billing cycle provides. So um, I guess the question to Ben and to staff is, can we do that through our production mm -hmm. um, figures that are coming out of the treatment plants? In other words, can we get sort of more rapid information as to overall use uh, to the board and to the public? I, absolutely, Director Bragman. Um, the um, production at our treatment plant is a very good gross indication of where we are in terms of meeting our goals and targets in terms of conservation broadly. And then the installation of flumes, we do have about 5% currently with our AMI automated meter infrastructure and other data loggers we plan to install. We'll be able to get more granular in different areas, high water users, different sectors to help um, target our education during this drought period. But the, at a high level, the numbers of production will be a very good indicator for us in terms of, are we um, meeting the goals we set that you're gonna hear more about in the next item. Yeah, and, I, and the other aspect of that is publishing it, not only to the board, but to the public Absolutely. So that everybody knows whether we're meeting our goals. I think that's kind of an important thing for folks Absolutely. to keep track of. We should also, as soon as we could, 
uh, reevaluate our bi-monthly billing system and see if we can get to a monthly billing system. Um, okay, I wanna open this up to public comment. I wanna um, advise folks, we are our next item will be the public hearing. So I'm gonna ask the people to the extent, maximum extent possible, if you've got comments really on the public hearing and the resolutions that we're considering, if you could hold them till then and avoid mm -hmm. repetition. But of course we wanna hear from you with any comments you have on this item. So with that, um, Tia, how are we looking on public comments? Uh, just for this item, I only see one hand raised. Okay. And yeah, for right now. Oh, I'm okay. sorry, now I see two. Uh, you still wanna do three minutes? Yes, or, of course. Okay, all right. So Mike Framer, or Framer. Go ahead, sir. I unmuted you. I'm actually Leslie Katzman and you you kicked me out of the meeting when I got on early and I couldn't get back on. So I'm using my husband's account. Um, I'm sorry, am I allowed to comment now on the, these proposed ordinances? Actually, no, we need you to hold on till we have the public hearing on the ordinances, but you're welcome to comment on those then. Okay, this is, this is the item just on the draft update. Apologize, yes. Go no ahead. We're sorry. Thank you. Sorry about the inconvenience before. Thanks for coming back. Okay, the next speaker I have is KJ Herrera. So, go ahead, KJ. Hi, I'm actually not KJ. I'm uh, uh, the garden designer of the family. Um, and I'm using their connection because I don't have a computer. So I can speak briefly to your outreach programs um, very kindly, Carrie Pollard and I spoke on the phone the end of last week. And I have been able to review um, information that the board secretary provided for me for your meeting since January. Um, so I would like to speak to what you're proposing. I don't know how many people you believe know about this, but I can tell you as a professional garden designer in Marin County for the last almost 24 years and a resident for 28 years, um, that I found a shocking lack of knowledge about any of this in the public arena and even in my own field in terms of nurseries and people who work in the field. A great many people were not aware that you are proposing um, a complete uh, moratorium on garden practices, garden plantings, garden installations, or extension of any existing gardens, which essentially would put out of business local nurseries and also those of us who work in the field. So that alone would cause some serious fallout in the community as I see it. Um, it would make me unemployed and a great many people that I know unemployed immediately. And that would continue until you decided to lift it, which I gather might be in December, um, not to mention the economic aspects of shutting down local nurseries, which also support people and all the other staff that are involved with landscape companies. So there is that. Um, as far as the, which I, I feel, I'm sure that you are all in earnest in wanting to do a good job to deal with the situation. I don't in any way dispute that there is definitely a drought. But putting up signs that say drought is here can serve um, doesn't really tell what it is that you are planning. And it doesn't address the eco ecological implications of what you are proposing. And I gather that perhaps you are not aware of those, which is why I went to the trouble of trying to speak to you this evening because I can tell you that there are ecosystems that when you do not water them will die and they will take years to reestablish and not by any means, I believe, Cynthia, you were the one who said that um, having, having no replanting would, is not climate resilient. Our gardens are actually ecosystems and there is research and I can point you in the direction of that which proves conclusively that gardening, actual gardening, not, not meadows, not existing natural landscapes, but the actual act of gardening creates ecosystems which it are, are incomparable to help with climate change. I'm okay. sorry, 
Yeah, that means your time is up. Did you want to finish your last sentence? Yes. Um, okay, just finish one sentence, please. Yes, okay. Um, I would like to have you come away with knowing that gardens are essential for the environment. They're not, Thank they're you. not so just okay. a quick response. I, I just want to thank you for your comment and just say, at least from my perspective, I couldn't agree more that gardens are ecosystems. It's what I was getting at in my remarks was that I would like to see um, people um, change out their turf, which are not gardens, for low water gardens, um, for native, um, for you know, for native plants that are more climate resilient. So I couldn't agree with you more about the importance of climate of gardens for climate resilience and any number of important ecosystem purposes. It's just a matter of aligning our gardening with the climate situation that we're in. So, and I'm, I'm happy to talk with you offline. I'm sure the staff is. Um, does anybody else on the staff want to make any kind of response? Okay, then um, I guess we're looking for the next, um, the next commenter on this item. Yeah, we have three more speakers in this order. Soren, then April Unkafer, then Jack Jacoby. So Soren, I'm going to- everybody. If we could keep our comments to this item and not to the next item, which is the um, which is the public hearing on the proposed resolution. So thank you. Okay. Go ahead, Soren. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. We can hear you. Okay. Good. I had I, I got three comments or questions. So you listed um, or you showed the consumption compared it between two thousand seventeen and two thousand twenty one. And um, do you have any um, uh, indication of which part is residential and which part is commercial? And also, are there any? What, what are the changes in in, in number of customers? I, I'll, I'll take if you can just point me or, or, or to the uh, to the information. That will be fine. The second one is the 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 ratio and the flume. I've never heard about it before, and I try to be up on technology. It goes into um, water conservancy, and so I I would like to know what outreach you have done <laughs> in order to get to customers. And and I have to admit I don't you know I, I I'm I'm paperless. Um, you are on automatic pay, so I don't <laughs> I don't read what I get in my email, right? So how do you know any way that you can uh, help the the communication between you and all the customers because we're busy too. And um, uh, um, and then the final thing I want to actually one thing I want to say about that we have a lot of NRGs in the community and each NRG has a phenomenal amount of emails and contacts uh, to to the local local residents. If you guys want to get out to a real big audience, get connected to the to the Marin NRG Society. They can basically push all that information out to you know, very, very small uh, cells in the, in the community. And I think that would really help a lot. Finally, have you any gray water programs uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, that can help you? Like, I mean, we are, we, are, we are doing the fill up the bucket when you, when, you know, when you take a shower until water get hot and then we use it for, for, for watering. But anything that could automate that would make it really um, um, uh, helpful. And I'll um, I'll rest the rest of my time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the comment. I'll just say quickly, we do have gray water programs. I'll let Carrie speak to those. But first, I want to make sure we don't lose sight of your first question. Um, ben or Carrie, can you respond to the question about um, you know how much we know about what is residential and what is commercial in response to Soren's question? Um, Lucy may know. I suspect we don't have those numbers on the tip of our finger here but if he would like to provide send an email in on the website you could do that we certainly would be able to respond with the details of the information he requested yeah we can point him to the right um, documents that'll be the most helpful so our urban water management plan will be the most helpful yeah that's what i was thinking too and then um uh and then carrie do you want to speak to the gray water programs that we have yeah, so I'll first I'll mention that the, the Flume program is not launched yet. That will be taken to the board for adoption on May 5th. So that would be why you haven't heard about it yet. It has not, it's not available. And mm -hmm. so, so we'll, we'll keep your eyes out for that one after May 5th. Gray water, we do have a gray water incentive program. That's a laundry to landscape program. It requires a workshop. And then 
um, with Urban Farmer, the Urban Farm Store, and then you can get a hundred dollars off a gray water kit. And there's more information for that on our website on uh, marinewaterorg slash conserve. Okay. Um, next question. Do we have another commenter, Terry? Yes. Um, April Unkefer. <clears throat> Good evening, board and President Kohler. Is this an appropriate time to make comments on the comprehensive outreach program or will there be a resolution I should wait for? No, I think this is when I think this is the right time to talk about what you heard just now in the, um, you know, about the outreach program. Unless, uh, Jeannie, do you think that there's another that, that it's better to wait? but it feels like this is the right time for that. Thank you. Okay, first, Sorry. first, I'm very excited about all of the things that Carrie spoke about. And I just wanted to make a suggestion of things I'd like to see added. In this moment of drought, I actually think a silver lining is water's moment to gain some true uh, movement on education. And so as I've read things in the Marin IJ to, 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 agree with the last caller about gray water, that was one word, and rain gardens are things I wish I could see highlighted more because as we wanna quit watering, we so very much so during the summer would like to still support our pollinators, create pollinator pathways throughout our community, um, still keep uh, a, a, a level of vegetation growing that creates shade, reduces our need for um, different energy consumption, creates food source, all of these things. So trees love gray water, it's a vitamin water to them. I, I obviously am not suggesting it for gardens, but I say that for, for fruit trees and things we love. And so I would love to see a couple of things. One, an increase to the gray water rebate program or, or incentive program to the kit or whatever that is, because things that get increased incentives get highlighted in communications with journals and journalism. Also, I would just love to see more highlighted at the top about gray water and especially rain gardens. In the rain gardens, as we move from drought, we will inevitably, if we follow the pattern of climate change, face when the rain finally comes, a flooding of rain. And so the rain garden does this very special thing where it takes the edge off both sides of the category. We can put in specifically drought uh, tolerant plantings that then when the rains come, don't just allow that water to rush off and, and create, if we had more time, a list of reasons why that wouldn't be good, but but then it also um, helps slow spread and sink that water that's going to come at a deluge, unfortunately, if we follow the trend. So those were just my comments. I'm really excited about what is happening. I'm so honored to have a water district that takes so much effort and has a great program. And, uh, and, I'm, and I'm really um, hopeful that this moment will inspire water to be valued at a place where it is because water is so highly undervalued. It's hard to really get across how important these measures are. So gray water, rain gardens, increased incentives highlighted at the top. Thank you. Thanks for your Thank comments. You. And just personally, let me just say, I'm so pleased that you raised rain gardens. I, I love rain gardens. They've got so many wonderful benefits. So thanks for raising that. Um, do we have any other comments, um, Terry, from the public? On the side yes, of. Jack Jacoby. Go ahead. Uh, hi, I was just wondering, uh, you know, quickly. I don't know if this is mentioned or not. I might have missed it. Uh, but given you know the direction our climate's going, which is you know kind of more towards a more boom and bust uh, sort of thing with very dry years and very wet years, I was wondering if there's been any thought given to increasing capacity on the supply side um, and maybe what costs would be of looking at desal versus expanding reservoirs? Ben, do you wanna to respond to that? You're muted. So um, in the presentation, we did touch on um, thinking a bit about desal in context of this drought extending um, through more years than the two we're trying to get through over the summer. Um, and the district has done quite a bit of work on desal and it's a very um, complex and costly operation, which is why we very much lean into conservation. That is the most cost-effective and most sustainable way 
to stretch our water supply, but we are certainly taking a look at desal. And um, I don't know if you suggested building a new reservoir or expanding the, the reservoir. Um, yeah, I'm thinking as, specifically like maybe raising the height of the dam on Alpine or something. Yeah, that, that was done about um, 20 years ago at one of the dams. And we did um, actually around the same time, the, these followed the 70, 70s drought, um, built a new reservoir in Sulahuli. And I'll be touching on those in the next presentation. Um, uh, so everything certainly is under consideration. And I, I, I suppose I would just note that um, the, the big question mark for us and all water agencies in the West is, um, is the drought we're experiencing and they seem to be coming more frequently, um, is it the new normal to, to use a bit of a tired phrase or um, will it go back to um, the conditions that we've experienced for decades? And if there is a long-term shift, I do suspect um, some of these things you're mentioning will need to be investigated. Thanks. Uh, ben, I have a quick question. Raising something like Alpine would be quite a task. It's a thin arch concrete dam, not simple by any means. But even more importantly, it's my understanding that our agreement with the State Water Resources Control Board is that we're not allowed to increase any take. If we were to build something that retain more water, we have to release it. That's what I recall. I could be wrong about that, but that's what I remember from the discussions. I... I understand that and I think even if it's not explicit that would be probably a natural outcome um, of doing something like that um, so right the, these are uh, complex and really does speak to why um, we are looking at conservation as a primary um, action during this drought and not just for the drought but as President Kohler noted really looking at the future as well really starting to dive deep into deeper into water conservation through gray, gray water and all the uh, initiatives that Carrie Pollard was talking about. And presumably Ben re uh, increasing our recycled water capability yeah, absolutely. That's um, water now that we all know gets discharged to San Francisco Bay and offsetting potable supply with water recycling is is something that we're we've done through the years and we're looking for opportunities to expand that. Director Gibson. Director. Sorry, any more President, questions? Sorry. Yeah, President Kohler, last one, Baron Hamill. Go ahead, Baron or Hamill. Thank you. Uh, I'm a retired interior designer and used to do a lot of remodel work. And I remember from the last drought, going back some years, I always wondered why do we not have on the topic of conservation for the future, mandatory hot water on demand systems for all new construction and remodel, as well as a rebate program for retrofit on existing homes. When you think of the amount of water that goes clean, fresh, pure water that goes straight down the drain while you're waiting for the shower to get hot, when the water heater is probably on the other side of the house, mm -hmm. in Europe, in other foreign countries, hot water on demand systems are a way of life. They don't waste water waiting for hot water in the shower. I offer that as a consideration for future conservation ideas. Thanks. It's a great suggestion, Ben or Carrie. Do you want to respond? I I do think it's a great suggestion, and Carrie and I and others have talked about that in terms of looking at future expansion of our conservation initiatives. Uh, of course, recall Ben, as I've been discussing it with my wife and I, using seventeen point five gallons per person. Um, mm -hmm. We have a five gallon pail in the shower and we capture that water and use it to flush the toilets. It's not that much of a task. Uh, it, it completely reuses that water. And we've dropped from 100 gallons per day per person to 17.5. Now we're not irrigating, so that's a part of it. But you, know, you can make a real impact on your internal water usage by just putting a five gallon pail in your shower and capturing that water that would normally go down the drain. Good point. 
Okay. We'll we see. actually. Oh, sorry. Sorry. There is one more speaker, Mr. Roger Roberts. Hello, Roger. Good evening. Uh, a comment relative to the discussion on turf removal. If I heard the presentation correctly, uh, that would allow uh, people to uh, put in new plantings of uh, drought resistant and uh, water saving plants, which they might delay installing for some months. Uh, will there be an opportunity for the district to provide them with mulching in the intervening period and even afterwards as part of the project? Carrie, do you want to take that, your wheelhouse yeah. here? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so so Mr. Robert, so there's two options. One would be the $3 per square foot rebate and the customer would be on their own to do the, the work around um, making that conversion from turf to low water use plant material. The other option would be a sheet mulching option where um, a local nonprofit would come and actually sheet mulch the, land, the, the lawn area and then the homeowner would be responsible for replanting down the road. Okay. Does that clarify? Okay, very good. Thank you. There are no further hands raised. Great. I believe that moves us on to the next item, which is the public hearing um, on the declaration of the water shortage emergency. So just to remind everybody, or for those of you who weren't here at the beginning of this item, I mean, of this, here, of this um, session, um, we're going to have a presentation from staff and um, we will then have board comment and then public comment. And then we'll be voting on the three items um, at the end of those conversations. So um, with that, um, I'm just gonna check in with our council, um, Molly. Is there anything else I need to do to open the public hearing? Yeah, thank you, President Kohler. Um, at this time, we can have the staff presentation and then when we're ready to um, receive comment um, from the public, then we wanna open the public hearing at that time. Oh, okay. We'll do it that way. Great. Thank you. All right, and once again, I'm just gonna ask if we could just let the staff get all the way through the presentation, because um, I think that will um, clarify things and um, make our, our questions and comments at the end a little bit more efficient. We do have 111 people here, which we're very excited about. So um, thrilled that you're all with us. Um, and uh, so thank you for bearing with our process. Okay, President Kohler, board members, uh, this is um, an item I'll be taking this evening. I am Ben Hornstein, general manager of the Water District. Um, we're pulling up the presentation and I'll roll into it. So as President Kohler noted, we'll be talking about the water shortage emergency um, resolution, mandatory water use reduction program and deferring the implementation of emergency water rates. So an overview, we're going to um, provide a little context and touch on the items that were brought forward this past Friday at our operations committee that we had been discussing previously as well and um, share some of the comments at a high level that have received um, that we received. We'll review the resolution declaring the water shortage emergency and the reasoning for requesting that the board adopt that along with the resolution for deferring implementation of emergency water rates and then considering adoption of mandatory restrictions. So very briefly, we heard a lot uh, from Lucy at the prior presentation. This is where we are today in terms of storage. And you can see this is our historic low point since we've had um, the current storage, total storage in our system that we currently have. So we're at 43,000 acre feet. Um, and I'll talk about what that means in terms of through the summer and what we're going to be targeting in upcoming slides. So big picture, our approach to drought and conservation efforts. Of course, this is a very historic drought condition we find ourselves in. We continue and plan to enhance voluntary indoor water uh, usage savings requests to our customers. We're considering tonight additional water waste restrictions and outdoor irrigation limitations. Um, we have done a tremendous amount of effort as you've heard and we're 
we'll continue that um, more so through the summer months and customer outreach, education, and support for our customers in terms of some of the incentives that we have and we're going to be bring back to the board at the next board meeting to enhance those. And all of these efforts are designed to preserve our water supply due to really the fact that none of us know what the future looks like in terms of rainfalls. Unfortunately, our history here um, has not been in, you know, the hundred year history having a long-term multi-year drought, but we do see that certainly around the world at times and it's possible. So we are trying very hard to work with our customers, our community, given that unknown situation to preserve the water we do have today. I did want to share why this is different. Um, Lucy in the prior presentation showed comparison to the drought of record in the 70s that may be replaced with the current drought, unfortunately, as our drought of record and why we are not in the same position as we were in the 70s and really gets summed up that uh, Marin Water MMWD has been very active since that time period to um, increase the resiliency of our water supply. Um, you see in 1979, we built Sulahuli Reservoir. In 1983, we enlarged Kent Lake. Collectively, that increased our system water storage by 50%. Certainly, we'd be in a very different position if that had not happened. We established and expanded the Recycle Water Program since 81. And as Director Gibson noted, we are looking at um, additional opportunities there. And front and center is our conservation program that we've had for decades, but we continue to work to enhance it uh, with all sectors, residential, commercial, industrial, outreach, education, incentives, and continue to um, look at what other water agencies are doing that are getting success, what technologies are out there. We've been talking a lot about that tonight as we've been doing the last number of months and really over the years. And lastly, um, we developed supplemental water supply with Sonoma Water in 1976 that currently on average provides about 25% of our water supply. Our goals during this historic drought, and this has come up a little bit um, because we want to know what we're shooting for. Of course, the board does, and probably most importantly, to help our communication with the public. What are we trying to achieve, and are we on target or not as we go into the hot summer months when our production generally more than doubles? And, and that's primarily, if not the, the doubling, is really due to irrigation. So we are targeting a 40% reduction from all our customers on a monthly average. And that is a big ask, but we do know that this community has, you know, um, responded to the call for action at prior droughts and we're confident in partnership will be able to do this. What that translates to is a residential average for indoor and outdoor use combined of 60 gallons per day. And this is in no way saying um, if you're at 60 gallons per day, you're good. We're, if you're at 60 gallons per day, we're asking you to reduce that by 40%. So on average, if we get the 40% reduction, we'll achieve a 60 gallon per person per day water usage, knowing that many of our customers are below that and can go far below that. Um, we hope uh, through these measures, we're anticipating to be roughly, as Lucy showed at the earlier presentation, about 30,000 acre feet of total reservoir storage in December. That is a low number. And um, with that, we're hoping for and anticipating at least an average year of rainfall. But without this conservation call and response, we would be much lower than that. So conservation, all the things we've been talking about is very critical for us to meet that goal. And staff will be ongoing monitoring and reporting to the board in terms of where we are um, currently every board meeting as to the established goals that are identified on this slide. We're gonna use our total water production data um, daily that's produced the treatment plants and on a monthly average, as well as use data from the limited installed 
automated meters that we have, as well as temporary data loggers, the flu meters. So we, we have a number of tools to be able to, um, in an ongoing way, assess where we are in terms of meeting these very important goals we're establishing. So how do we do this? Our implementation plan, as we talked about, is customer outreach and education. There's really um, nothing we can do um, as a water company um, without our customers buying in and partnering and doing their part in terms of conservation. We do, we have historically and plan to increase, as you heard tonight, supporting the customers, looking at enhancing incentives, creating additional incentives in the interest and support of driving down the use of water and conserving this precious resource that we have. And an adaptive approach based on ongoing demand and where we find ourselves in terms of projection. So whatever action the board decides to take tonight, this is not certainly um, necessarily the last action you may want to take through the summer. So we have flexibility and we do plan to be adaptive as we move forward. So we wanted to touch on the, some of the key um, recommendations that staff brought forward last Friday and the comments in a general way that were received. There were certainly a lot of comments, so everyone may not see their specific one, but in general terms. We suggested adding additional mandatory waterways prohibitions, for example, not allowing um, our customers to wash cars in the driveway. Um, and there's a whole list of those I'll be covering in upcoming slide. The comments we received, I think it's fair to say, generally they seem to make sense to folks. There were some concerns about not filling up uh, swimming pools. We also suggested um, consideration of one day a week, one day per week for irrigating lawns and ornamental landscapings. Um, some of the comments we received on that was that um, we should just expect overwatering on the one allowable day and thus we will not receive the anticipated reduction that restrictions should not apply to vegetable gardens, which we've clarified that they would not because they are not ornamental landscaping or grass and turf. They're functional landscaping, so they would not apply to that restriction. And then we did get some limited concerns from commercial operations. I'm not suggesting limited in terms of the interest, but just in terms of numbers. Um, uh, in terms of golf courses and nurseries and as commercial operations will be working directly with the commercial sector on a more um, granular basis of ways they can achieve the 40% reduction while remaining um, viable operations. We also suggested prescribing the specific day per week um, for irrigating. And there were quite a number of comments on that that include, um, why does MMWD, why should Marin Water care which day per week I water? Um, and that, okay, you give me a specific day, call it Tuesday, that may not work for my schedule because I'm out of town on Tuesday. And again, why would you constrain me to a specific day versus a one day or were you to go to two days? So Generally, these are the comments we received on the key um, recommendations. And I think going forward, you'll see um, some flexibility that we put into this presentation and recommend going for recommendations going forward that um, reflect that we did hear our customers and we appreciate all the comments we got. And our interest is really to strike the right balance do the right thing to manage the charge we have of ensuring we have enough water, even if this coming wet season doesn't bear the fruit we would like. At the same time, um, we are not interested to be water cops out there beating our customers up, right? It's all about partnering and working together in a collaborative way to save this precious resource that we have. 
So our proposed path forward in terms of um, tonight, that um, we would recommend that we, uh, the board adopts a resolution declaring the water shortage emergency and all of these, I do have a slide on, I'll move forward in some detail, adopt the resolution deferring the implementation of emergency water rates. And I understand the board's interest given the pandemic that we're coming out of um, to hold off that um, uh, implementation of drought water rates or emergency water rates that we do have the ability to do and many water agencies do. But um, again, this is about balancing the economic health of our community at the same time, trying to ensure that um, we remain viable and we're able to do our job. And then we're gonna ask the board to consider adoption of the additional waterways prohibitions, as well as the potential restrictions on outdoor irrigation. So I'll briefly go over those one by one, the resolution declaring the water shortage emergency. As we talked about, without the additional measures, we would be significantly lower than 30,000 acre feet. Uh, December 1st and the 30,000 acre feet even. So this is the best circumstances is historically low for us at that time of year. Um, we do have in our code um, that we may um, restrict the use of district water during drought emergency and prohibit wastage through this declaration of an emergency. And this provides district authority to appropriate regulate water conservation to achieve the greatest public benefit. And again, as we've talked about, the intent behind this is to preserve the water supply given the uncertainty of the upcoming wet season. The resolution deferring the implementation of emergency water rates um, by taking the action in February and potential action tonight that um, triggers a language in the code that would implement the emergency water rates. Um, by If the board elects to defer the implementation of the emergency water rate, staff would monitor reserves and provide regular financial updates to the board um, every month. We would also plan, and we're doing a lot of uh, discussion within staff of cost-saving measures were feasible through this time period and also utilize reserve funds that we've been fortunate um, to work with the board and plan for events like this and has, have reserves that will, will take us um, at least a good part of the way there. And with this action, the board still does reserve the right to implement emergency water rates in the months ahead if deemed necessary. Okay, next slide. So two elements of the um, next set of actions, one is waterways prohibitions and the other is considerations of restrictions on irrigation. So the waterways prohibitions is washing of vehicles. Um, this does not include going to car washes that use recycled water and there'll be a list of those um, car wash facilities that recycle their water or use recycled water on our website. Um, refilling or adding makeup water for decorative fountains or recreational pools. The golf course irrigation is restricted to greens and teas and that would maintain their financial viability. Um, only use fire taps and this is generally on commercial um, facilities or fire lines um, just for fire protection and annual testing. No other purposes are allowed to use that water. No power washing of buildings and, or, and homes and um, no use of potable water for dust control. And this is mostly uh, construction related compaction, sewer flushing that um, are um, partners in the wastewater agencies uh, do use potable water at times, street cleaning, or really any other use that can be met with tertiary recycled water um, would be prohibited. And as a note, and this is very important, um, 
we have a whole uh, long list of normal year, meaning just ongoing waterways prohibitions that continue to be in effect. So for example, and there's many and they're on our website, and we'll be incorporating those that we've been doing in our communication and outreach to our customers. So an example is providing water at restaurants upon request only. So only upon request. And right, there's a whole number of these that are always in effect at um, marine water. Restrictions on outdoor irrigation. Again, these are in addition to normal year restrictions. An example of what's normally in place is we don't allow over irrigation that results in gutter flooding. And we'll be particularly vigilant as we're asking everyone to be certainly during this drought period. We also always ask our customer not to irrigate um, in the heat of the day, approximately from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Because um, it's just much, much less efficient. Uh, much of the water just evaporates before it even lands on the grass and is able to soak in and um, for its intended purpose. So currently in the ordinance that's attached to the staff report, we've followed through with um, the recommendations you saw on Friday of one day of irrigation per week, considerations of options for the board tonight. Um, instead of one day, based on the feedback, you may want to consider two days, given some of the comments that I've touched on that a sense that a one day, I'm just you know gonna drench my lawn and the, are you really gonna see a savings? Uh, specifying or not, allowable days per uh, during the week for irrigating. Um, what we received a number of comments there of that perhaps felt a bit controlling. It was proposed by staff because we felt um, that would support our customers in terms of educating them. Um, so everyone in a given city on Wednesdays know that's the day to irrigate. And if your neighbor is irrigating on a Saturday, you know, you can help educate them. But um, I understand the comments that the board may want to uh, think about that. Or we could, of course, the board could completely pivot and just, you know, have this more voluntary with a, with a soft target. Um, I think uh, from my view and the comments I've heard, I think perhaps looking at two days a week and uh, perhaps holding off specifying what days of the two days per week for irrigation may be a thoughtful approach at now, understanding we can always be um, more restrictive as needed if our targets are not being met in terms of overall conservation. Uh, the language in the ordinance also includes, and we went in detail, um, on Friday, some enforcement as well as variance and appeal process. And um, from a staff view, uh, we don't anticipate needing to use this very much, um, but is, it, is intended for outliers that um, may feel like they can still wash their car in their driveway. This is Marin, again, is expected that would be very much an outlier, but we do believe it um, makes sense to maintain the language in the ordinance. So the recommendations is adoption of the resolution declaring the water shortage emergency along with the resolution deferring the implementation of emergency water rates adopt the mandatory urgency ordinance with the additional water waste prohibitions and the enforcement variance and appeal language. And then for the board, perhaps to take a little time and talk about where you'd like to land in terms of limitations of irrigation, one or two days per week, and whether or not um, you'd support specifying the days of allowable irrigation. So with that, President Kohler, I'll um, turn it back to you. Uh, Great. For Thank you, Ben, for that very comprehensive um, um, uh, presentation. The one question that I have for you to make clear, and uh, you may have covered this, but I just want to make sure we really call it out because I've had a number of press questions about this over the last few days. Can you describe um, exactly why um, we are um, considering this now? I mean, obviously, you've made a strong case for 
you know, and as Lucy has earlier, you know, that there's a drought, but um, if you could just, you know, run through the particular trigger that we have established for ourselves as a district so that everybody's on the same page about why we're moving in this direction now. Yeah, our, yes, uh, our primary trigger that we're looking at is 30,000 acre feet December 1st. And our projections um, as we move past the spring have really solidified um, given the uh, likelihood that we don't get meaningful rain through the summer months, that we will be below that point, which does trigger um, mandatory conservation action in the interest of preserving the water we do have. Great. And then I had understood there was also an April 1st trigger at, at 40,000 acre feet. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. And um, on April 1st, we were slightly above that. And we did in February anticipate that. And we recommended to the board in February to proceed with a voluntary call um, just to be um, conservative in terms of the prior year that was so dry and anticipating this was a possibility which did occur of having a dry spring. Great. So thanks for clarifying that. Um, so I want to open it now first to um, board questions and comments on the presentation. I have a couple of questions. Okay, Jack. Um, on the, uh, when you say consideration of the, the day, for example, what, what we're, we're called upon to approve the ordinance tonight. Uh, what happens to that issue of uh, the, the, for example, and there's several in there, but uh, and it, the issue of selecting uh, or, or mandating the given day that somebody can water. What happens if we approve the ordinance tonight? Um, the, the plan is, and I've worked with Molly McLean, our general counsel, that based on the board discussion and the motions that may be a place in the direction the board goes, we will adapt the ordinance language tonight to reflect the board direction to the extent we can. It's possible it's something we didn't anticipate or it's more complicated and we may have to bring a piece back to the next board meeting, which would not be the end of the world. But we do expect that based on the discussion um, tonight that um, Molly will be able to go through with the board and the public specifically what you're voting on and changes, what changes we would be making to the posted ordinance so the board would be able to adopt with clarity to the public the actions um, that you would like to see. Did I do okay, Molly? Yes, I would say that so long as we're not um, uh, getting too, too, too much into wordsmithing um, in, in short order such that it's not gonna be clear to the public and the board or, or even me, the changes that we're making, but if we're making mm -hmm. concise targeted changes, I'm prepared to um, identify the provisions, identify some of the changes tonight so that we can move forward. And as um, General Manager Hornstein said, it's possible to um, just take out the sections that we may think need more work and bring those back as an augment um, at a future date. So I think we, we can that, have, then. we do have some flexibility with that. Yes, we will yeah. also for the public, um, so they're aware, um, be publishing a summary of the ordinance um, within 10 days after its adoption. To, if it's adopted tonight, within 10 days, we'll be putting that in the Marin um, Independent Journal. So that would be uh, a summary of what was actually adopted um, available for people to see um, in print. Okay, but, but, but we would be actually adopting the ordinance tonight. Yes. That's correct, because under the, the water code, it does allow for the board to adopt an urgency ordinance that would be effective upon adoption, correct? Right, and I have no problem with the urgency and the, 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 that part of it. Uh, where I am having a problem is uh, on the details of the many little rules in there, for example, the designated day of watering, uh, will be... We're not seeing the ordinance that we're approving. That'll be yet to come. It'll go back and make the changes uh, for the ordinance that we're approving tonight. Well, which doesn't I mean, make a lot of sense to me. Well, we do have the draft. I mean, unless you're planning on, unless we're thinking about making wholesale changes, Jack. I mean, 
Well, yeah. whatever, it's going to come out of our discussion. Whatever changes come will come out of our discussion tonight, which means we won't see that language until some date in the future. No, I, 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 I understand what you're saying, Director Gibson, and that's why I wanted to clarify that the targeted changes that I could read into the record for the board and the public yeah. tonight. Um, so, so long as they're, if they're extensive, then, then that may be much more of a challenge for us to, to accomplish that this evening. Okay, well, my concern is, I, I, I do have a number of concerns throughout the thing. I'm not sure I can work that out, uh, but let me propose this. Uh, that whatever we approve tonight, we bring back in total, say a month from now or some appropriate time, I'm not sure when the appropriate time is, but at some future date for a revisit and reapproval, and that be part of the whatever approval we have tonight, because I feel like I'm fi flying blind here to some extent. Can I, can I just suggest that we revisit that, Jack, after we see if we're going to have six extensive changes? I mean, we, we really have just started the conversation. So do you want to begin that by letting us know what changes you're, what you're concerned about? Well, I'm very concerned about the, the one, one day a week, but there's a, a other things in there. I'm not sure we should mandate to golf courses, how they manage their, uh, their, 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 their club. I mean, I think that's up to them. We want them to be within the water limits, but how they manage that should be up to them. So that's another one that I have some concern with. Uh, but uh, on the whole, I think that it's just a good idea. To, we don't know what kind of reaction we're gonna get and what kind of uh, feedback we will get from people as they get into this. It seems like a good idea to revisit it no matter how it turns out. Even if we approved it in total, I'd say it's, uh, let's see how it works out in practice. Um, another thing, Ben, I'd like you to, to explain is we have a, an exemption process built in there. So if somebody has a special situation, they'll come to us. How will that work? Yeah, so it's a variance in an appeal process. So for example, um, the golf course. Um, we have engaged with a golf course who um, indicated that they would be able to achieve the 40% reduction, but being held to one day a week would be very mm -hmm. difficult. Um, and that would be a prime candidate for a variance where we'd be able to work with them and work through a variance. Mm -hmm. If they um, weren't satisfied with a variance, they could go through the appeal process and there's a two step appeal process. The intent from staff in creating the variance and appeal process is recognizing that a regulation like this um, is not something done very often, fortunately. And it is not gonna fit the circumstances, the unique circumstances of every commercial enterprise, of every customer, and there's gonna be unanticipated impact, some which could be significant. And so we've developed this very thoughtful and robust variance and appeal process with the expectation that the vast majority of those unique circumstances would be dealt with successfully through that process. Well, I think we all are looking for the same thing here. We want people to use less water. Uh, the real question is, what's the better, best way to achieve that? And that's what we're struggling with. Yeah, I, I agree completely with Jack. And I'm also concerned about allowing enough time for the public to get their input to us um, I, I don't understand why it has to be done tonight. Uh, and Molly, perhaps you can address that. Is it a situation where we have to adopt it during the public hearing? I mean, why couldn't we do what we're going to do tonight, hear the public that's available, and, and bring it to the finance meeting on Thursday for approval Director if Russell, it needs to be? Yes. Yes. So, no, the board does not have to adopt uh, the ordinance this evening, um, we would want to continue the public hearing to a date certain if we're going to continue the item or we would have to re-notice um, a new public hearing in order for the board to act on the particular on this, this ordinance tonight. Um, it's possible to adopt um, the resolutions and then have um, 
the ordinance adopted with some redactions um, and, and it is possible then to augment um, the, the restrictions and the, and the ordinance um, in, the, in the future. Um, we, we have some flexibility there, um, but we are in, in a public hearing process um, as required by the water code for adoption of um, these restrictions. So we would need to be cognizant of um, either re-noticing re the public hearing or continuing to a date certain so we would not have to be <clears throat> re-noticing. Yeah, that doesn't seem like too much of a, a penalty to me. Um, uh, I, like I say, I, I don't understand the, the gun to our head approach here. Uh, I think we should have a calm, cautious discussion of this. It's, it's a serious matter. Yes, it's better to institute it sooner than later, but a few days isn't going to make, uh, uh, I don't think, a, a mountain of difference to us in the long run. I'd rather have the public's input and, and get it right in the view of all, mm. at least everybody we can hope to satisfy, than is to it, rush is it and try possible, to get it done. Is it possible and, and does it make sense uh, to declare the emergency? I think that we probably are in full agreement that we have an emergency. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and declare the emergency, but then at, at, at the next meeting or the, the next future after we get some greater public hearing, greater public input, uh, we work out the, the details of exactly what we're going to do about that emergency that we've declared. Right. So just to jump in here, Jack. So that's, I think, part of the reason why we have the three different votes. So I think we can definitely, you know, have the conversation about, you know, the, the, the vote on the emergency declaration. And if there's a reason to, um, um, if there's a reason to delay, if the changes that people are looking for are so substantial that we need to delay adoption of the ordinance, I think I'm, I'm hearing our general counsel say that we can certainly do that. And of course, you've heard from staff and management that the urgency is, is simply, you know, our, you know, just the situation that we're in. But I think we all agree that, you know, uh, a few days is, is not going to make that big a deal. I think, I think my question is, uh, we seem to be putting the cart before the horse. We're talking about delay, and I'm still very unclear about what it is that we're, you know, that we, um, that we're, uh, that we're concerned about in the proposal. But so maybe if we could, if I could just ask the board to maybe um, talk a little bit more about their questions about the particulars, or is it that you're really just wanting to hear from the public first? We could of course do that and then come back to the board for comment. Would that be a better approach? Well, I'll just say one thing in response to your your, your suggestion here. I, um, as far as coming out with what I think is wrong with the, the, the details, um, I, I, I don't, I don't have every situation, so I can't I can't predict what is going to impact in a negative way that I might not anticipate from members of the public. So I, I think we need to get that out there and absorbed more by the public uh, so that we can understand individual cases. And I understand we have the appeal process, but you wouldn't want to put more people through that process than is necessary. And that is a that's a that's a, a safety valve, no question about it. But uh, but again, if we can solve some of those problems beforehand, we're better off. Okay, um, I want to be sure that I'm hearing from Director Bragman and Director Schmidt before <clears throat> we go to public comment. And then I think what we'll do is after public comment, we'll bring it back to the board before the vote. Um, Director Schmidt, I just want to. Yeah, I just want to. Um, I guess it, it, whether it's. Um, I'm not sure who's the best person to answer the question, but looking at, at water use data for April, it, it, water use has, has been increasing, if, if I see the data correctly. And I have to say that I'm, I'm concerned when I see that, because I think that the awareness of how dry circumstances are has been you know, out there for, for now quite a number of months, but we didn't see a decrease in water usage in April. And I don't know if that's a, a COVID-related impact of people being at home um, more and, and therefore we're still consuming more water than we would have normally if we were all, all in at businesses or whatnot. But it, it does concern me that, that, our, that our projections based on the historic usage and responses, we may be wrong because we're dealing with different set of circumstances than what we have seen in the past. So that it just might be an observation or a concern, but it, 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 um, I am concerned about that. 
I, I could just touch on that very briefly, um, reflecting that um, there's quite a bit of variability um, just in a kind of typical year in terms of spring water usage because the weather pattern is so variable. Um, if it's a very dry, like it was last year in February, you have a higher use as you start going into the spring. Um, so as we really get into May, um, where typically it doesn't, we don't see much precipitation, we'll really have a much better indication of where we are with water conservation. That said, that number did catch all of our attention and reinforce the need to, in terms of communication and getting the word out. So um, it's something we're, we're certainly gonna need to keep an eye on and we're gonna be reporting back to the board on an ongoing basis. Um, Director Bragman, any comments before we go to public comments? Yeah, just briefly. Um, I think a, another variable in the April uh, consumption may be the economy reopening because we've had virtually no commercial use for 14 months. Oh. So as the economy opens and our commercial customers start gearing up, we're going to see an increase in consumption in that sector. Um, as to the problem before us as a body uh, for adopting the um, regulations. Um, yeah, I agree. I don't think there's any controversy about declaring a uh, water shortage emergency. So that's got to be done. Um, the, the real controversy that I hear from the community is irrigation, which of course is our, our biggest area uh, that we need to conserve in. So I was just gonna suggest as a practical matter for drafting or for proceeding, we may wanna adopt uh, the um, sort of low hanging fruit um, that, we've, that staff has put out as far as water use regulations and maybe defer on irrigation um, until we get more data, hear more comment, but at least we start this process of raising awareness, starting to tighten the use and kind of go through it in phases if we can't really come to a consensus tonight. So we could pass whatever, almost nine out of 10 of the water use regulations leaving, you know, the really tough one about irrigation for further um, consideration. So just, just a suggestion as to kind of getting off the dime and, and starting. Sorry, I think I'll just add to the mix. These all sound like good suggestions to me. I think we need to get to public comment. I'll just say that I think our biggest reservoir of opportunity is outdoor irrigation. And again, I'll just say my own preference for gardens and gardening, um, but I also think we can be more efficient about the way we keep our landscape beautiful and healthy. And I think there's a lot of opportunity there and that not every restriction on outdoor um, landscaping is necessarily um, detrimental either to our economies or to that landscaping. So I think we need to keep in mind that nobody's talking about destroying all of our, all of our landscaping. We're really talking about pulling our community together um, in partnership to address what is a very, very serious situation. And I, I'm hearing that we all agree that we need to have more public input and, um, you know, and consider some of the staff recommendations, um, you know, and make sure we've got something of a consensus before going forward. So um, with that, um, Terry, what do we have on uh, public comment? Uh, we have a lot of hands raised. Uh, there are 107 attendees and I'm seeing hands that I can't scroll down fast enough to catch up. Yes. So I don't know if you want me to have a time limit for- yeah. So given that um, we've already been here um, for close to two hours, it's 9.15, um, I'm gonna suggest that we limit people to one minute going forward. Okay. All right, so going forward, uh, please keep your hands up until we call on you. Uh, first one I have on the queue is Mary Lou yes. Lau. I just wanna remind um, oh. President Kohler, we're opening, this is the opening of the public hearing process. Okay. We are now opening the public hearing. Okay. 
Okay, so the first one I have is Mary Lou, Mary Lee Lau. Go ahead, Miss Lau, you have a minute. Okay, I just can I just don't know if you can hear me. Yes, we okay. can. My we can. my quick comment is I, I thoroughly believe in conservation. I believe that what we need to do is do this. I was here in 76 when all this happened. And but I do have a couple concerns. One is the water, watering the days that we're allowed to water, and the other is topping off the pool. I mean, we're all home now, and we're we're going to be home again. We didn't make the tier so that we could go other places, and I, I just think that somehow that I don't know how I'm going to handle my pool, and you know, what, do I just turn it off? Do I let it drain? Do I let the mosquitoes get in it? What do I need to do? So that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I just say because I I know that there are going to be a lot of questions on this. Um, Carrie, can you respond to that just so that we can address some of the concerns that that others may have on this, so that we're not you know, having people continually raise this issue. I mean, it's fine if you want to, I just wanna make sure that we're addressing it. Um, yeah, I, I can address that. So what the, the code ordinance does say is that we're asking folks to not fill their pool or refill their pool. Um, and so if there's a concern around safety or the need to, to add water to your pool for maintenance or, you know, to, to minimize hardship, then that would be part of the variance process at this point as the ordinance is written. All right, next next question. Okay, uh, next comment, uh, Mike Fr Framer. Go ahead, Mike. Hi, it's, it is Leslie again, Leslie Katzman. <laughs> I'm gonna go quickly through four points here. I know I only have a minute. First of all, I'm a landscape architect. So obviously I have a lot of concern about projects I just installed that are drought tolerant, but need to get established. They could all die. These are very expensive plan installations. Secondly, I have customers projects that have been planned for you know half a year up to a year going in. And I don't know whether I have to tell people their projects are canceled. And again, my business could greatly be affected by this. Um, secondly, I wanted to just put in a note for being flexible with how you save water. I, for one, would rather not take a shower than see my garden die. And this is <laughs> just me, but it's really important for me to do gardening. It's a hobby and it, um, I not only have an ornamental garden, I have an orchard. I produce food, food for my family year round. I preserve, I freeze. So it's really critical that you have these variances for people that want a more sustainable lifestyle. Ugh. Sorry. Sorry. I, you know what? I think I think a minute is not going to work. Let's 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 put it to two minutes, okay? I just don't want us to all be here till midnight. Okay, I'll be really quick. Um, I recommend saying eliminating, reducing new water hookups. I think you should be talking with planning and building department to reduce the population, the growing population here. And finally, I want to put in a word for the salmon. I heard you might reduce flow to Lagunitas Creek. I honestly think the salmon are a very important issue here and I'm worried about them. They would never recover if they don't have ample water flow. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you, Leslie. And, and thank you for, for hanging in there even though we keep calling you Mike. Um, do we want to um, take a, a minute to talk about, because I think she raises a very, very important issue about people who are trying to do the right thing and put in low water landscaping. We certainly don't want them to lose that investment. Um, I don't know if Carrie or Ben, do you want to speak to that? Sure. Um, so, you know, I think that if someone's just installed a low water use landscape, you know, then they can, uh, you know, the way it's written right now is they could apply for a variance. And, you know, I think that we, we, we've seen in the past that in, you know, four weeks, you should, on a drip irrigation, you should be able to get your plants at least somewhat established. And that would be part of the variance process at this point. And I'll just throw in on a personal note as somebody who has um, uh, litigated a number of endangered salmon uh, cases, I'm totally with you. And, and thank you for your comments about um, protecting salmon. Um, next comment. Um, next two, the first one is Paul Kafetz, then um, Howard. So Paul, go ahead, Paul, you have two minutes. It's muted. Oh, oh yeah, Mr. Kafetz, you do seem to be muted. 
I think you need to unmute. There you go. Yeah, I keep asking nope. him to unmute. Unmuted. Well, Mr. Kafetz, there you are. Me? Yes. Okay. My name is Paul Kafetz. I reside in Mill Valley. In 1974, your predecessor board faced with a similar situation included in its emergency water shortage provisions, a moratorium on new water hookups for large projects. Right now there are four to 5,000 units in the pre-application stage, either doing an EIR at the county at the moment or meeting with neighbors in Northgate. Uh, how can you uh, do dr draconian limitations on people's showers and landscaping yet allow four to 5,000 new hookups to start to consume water. It doesn't seem to be equitable. Ben, can you respond to that? We had um, at the last board meeting, I believe, or maybe it was on the committee last week, we brought to the board a range of considerations regarding new connections during this time period with a, a range of alternatives that at one extreme did include a moratorium, but had other options for the board to consider and will continue to engage you in, including greatly restricting their ability to put in turf and um, irrigation demands and the like. So we're, this, this is a certainly an important issue and we'll continue to talk about it and work with the board and understand um, Try like we're doing tonight to, to hit the right balance and um, address the uh, responsibilities ahead of us, in front of us. I okay. will just say quickly on that, um, you know, that did result in a very, very famous lawsuit where, that the district lost. This was long, long, long before my time, um, but that did result in a, in a very famous lawsuit that it's literally taught in every water law class in the entire country. So MMWD did not come out well on the end of that particular decision, but we're happy to talk with you further about that. Okay, okay. Uh, we have Howard, and then after Howard, we'll have Aaron Burden, then Scott Sherman. So Howard? Um, Cynthia, uh, before we go on, I think it, we should try to avoid commenting on each questioner, each commenter, okay. because it's gonna take forever. And uh, by the way, it's taught in engineering <laughs> classes too. Okay, I'm just trying, well, yeah, I'm, I'm really just trying to make sure that other people don't feel it's necessary. So here's the, the balance that we're trying to, I'll just say this for everybody. What we're trying to avoid is a situation where people come to this meeting, they've spent their time, it's 9.30 at night, and they feel that we're not listening to them. So it may be that we don't respond to everybody, but I do think that to the extent that we can respond and therefore make other people feel that they don't need to spend more time asking the same question, I think it's important that we do that. And then public know that we're hearing them. Howard, go ahead. Hi, so my name is Howard Hill. I live in San Rafael. Um, I've got two points that I wanted to make. Um, you know, we've invested a lot of time in our garden. My husband is a landscape architect. Um, and I'm, I'm all, I called, the, I called the water district today to find out about rebates on flume and, and we're gonna pull out our lawn and we're, we're willing to go a long way. I don't think the board though should be telling people what plants, one, one day a week of watering is gonna cost a lot of the life of a lot of plants. And I'm willing to let some go, I'm willing to take out the lawn, but I, but I think we should get to decide which plants will live. And that plant that lives might need watering four days a week, I don't know, or it's in a pot or something, rather than some, some arbitrary, you know, you can water on Tuesdays and everything dies. Uh, it's almost a waste of effort to say one day a week because most things will die and you might as well just stop watering altogether. And of course, it affects my husband's landscape architecture business. Uh, he pointed out, you know, listening to their comments, it takes a season normally to uh, establish plants, not four weeks in his opinion. Um, so I, that's, that's all I wanted to say. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to conserve and ready to cut our consumption 40%. I just want to take the steps to do it my own way and not, and, and we'll put meters and we'll put a flow thing on and we'll watch our flow and we'll cut it down however I want, you know, 
but I, I don't want to be told I can't water a plant on a certain day. My neighbors will turn me in, which is only going to polarize the entire neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for that. Uh, oops. Trying to scroll back. Oh, okay, uh, Aaron Burden. Go ahead, Mr. Burden. Hello, sorry about that. I had to unmute myself. Uh, I first just want to thank uh, staff and the board members for all their work on this. Uh, I know it's a very complicated issue. Um, and I, I am the union representative for SCIU, and I, we do want to say that um, our staff, our members, are committed to being partners um, with all, with the ratepayers and with everyone to trying to make sure that whatever path we take is successful. So that's the first thing I want to say. Um, now, the second question I had was around uh, delaying an ordinance. Uh, clearly, it takes you know time to educate and to to um, uh, folks about an ordinance. But if we wait a month or so, we're losing a month of time for that education. Uh, so that's one of my concerns is how much of a worse situation would that put us in, in terms of water conservation? And then the second component has to do with um, regulating uh, you know, days that watering can occur. Um, I would think that the, the reason for um, selecting days would be to help with the enforcement component and the education component um, of the ordinance. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And the next speaker I have is Scott Sherman. I'm sorry, Dr. Sherman. Hi, Go ahead. this is actually Mrs. Dr. Sherman. Uh. <laughs> My name is Susan. I'm using his, uh, his computer. Um, I believe we're all in an entitled lucky group in the world that has access to the best potable water ever. So I would like to thank the MMD MMWD board and uh, staff and everybody involved for providing me with this entitlement that I really, really, um, I'm just so lucky. I also believe that con conservation, and as the previous person said, is a draconian measure. I am happy to take part of that. So the question is, if we do to reach out to our conservation goals, where will we all be? And will we be able to reach for that cool, tall, clear glass of water come the fall, if that's our goal, if people don't conserve? Thank you. And can you respond okay. to that, please? Well, I, I, I think uh, the speaker hit the mark that um, that, that is the intent. Um, and, um, you know, the, the, there are some impacts um, to conservation, to asking our customers to conserve in the way we're doing it or however we ultimately do it. And this is tonight and going forward is about striking the right balance with the uncertainties and unknowns we have, which are really primarily both how much conservation we actually realize and then what next year looks like. And today, those are the two key factors that we're, we don't know and we won't know. So there is a measure of moving forward in the face of uncertainty, but all sharing the same goal for sure. Okay. All right, so the next three speakers, the phone number ending in 1402, Richard Harris, and then um, Baron Hamill. So phone number, phone number ending in 1402. Uh, Hello? James Holmes, Lark James Holmes, Larkspur. Uh, first of all, I would request you to go forward and uh, uh, out, uh, outlaw uh, power washing, because that at least is in almost all cases unnecessary and often frivolous. And I hope that the, the limitation includes driveways as well as structures. Uh, beyond that, I would just like to say the entire focus is on customer conservation, but to be equitable and effective, the burden should be shared by other stakeholders. Specifically, the district should reduce water, uh, should reduce re reservoir releases to fish for fish to the maximum extent lawful, 
and the district should also temporarily halt new connections or explore that to the extent possible as previously suggested. As a practical matter, uh, the drought cannot be taken seriously until these steps are taken seriously. Your customers should not be uh, stuck with dead plants and dirty toilets when developers get a free ride and fish swim freely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next speaker, I don't see uh, Richard Harris, so I'm going to uh, Baron Hamill. Go ahead, Baron. Thank you. Uh, Baron Hamill, Court of Madeira. I have a couple of quick ones. If the household goal is 60 gallons per day, what happens to the goal on irrigation day? That's part one. And part two is instead of watering one or two days a week, what if you watered less, but more often, which would preserve the garden, but allow the same amount of water usage? I, President okay. Kohler, just briefly, I, I could respond. The, um, in the first question is very important because it provides an opportunity for clarification. We are not asking our customers to reserve conserve individually on 60 gallons per person per day. We know today many customers use less, which is awesome, and can even go lower. Um, that's our number that on average of all of our customers, 200,000 customers, on average, if we're able to reduce to 60 gallons per day, that would reflect a 40% reduction in use. So we're over about 100 gallons per day, plus or minus on average. So we're trying to drive that average down. In terms of um, appreciate the comment, and I think the board is hearing that in terms of um, days a week, specifying the days, and it, it's um, a, a difficult um, process to um, address every circumstance in every backyard in a way that's responsible to meet the charge that we and more so that the board carries, I suppose. Thank you. Okay, the three next three speakers, Laura Ch Charitin, Tom Flynn, and then a rep from Sleepy Hollow Presbyterian Church. So Ms. Charitin. Hi, thank you yes. very much. Um, so I'm just wondering, because we've been down this road several times before, um, where is the electric and composting toilets, you know, for those of us that could and would use them as an incentive to reduce water supply, water, uh, reduce water use? And then I'm confused by the 40% reduction um, if I'm already using 29 gallons a day, and I've got a, a lot of land too, and animals, um, how can I reduce it 40% more? I guess I'd be the same as uh, Larry Russell um, at 17.5 gallons a day. <laughs> and then um, the salmon absolutely are a keystone species and critical to several other species survival. So I would say, you know, give the salmon the water they need to survive. And thank you very much. Oh, wait, one more thing. Um, yeah, no, that was it, sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank well, you. I, I, this is a really important thing for staff to address. Um, obviously we have a range of folks in the community. Some, um, you know, have already made um, as the last speaker and, and I think others who have talked very significant reductions already. So can we speak to that issue? Um, you know about what we're what our expectations are so we're not really asking for a 40 percent across the board reduction so can you speak to that ben yes president kohler the intent of sharing the 60 gallons per day per person is what the 40 percent reduction translates to as we calculate it out of what on average the usage would be and i just want to really reinforce that it is so great when we look at our database and understand how many of our customers really use such little water. Um, at the same time, because the average is relatively high, 
we do have customers with large yards with a tremendous amount of turf that use a lot of water in the summer. And that's what causes our, the demand, the usage in our water system to double in the summer as compared to the winter. And that's why folks are hearing a lot of discussion about restrictions on irrigation, asking our customers, requiring our customers, because this time period in the summer is the opportunity both to even go further if you can in terms of indoor water use and taking advantage of our incentives and understanding our offerings and what best practices, but also as a community taking a look at the discretionary water use in lawns and ornamental landscaping. And we aren't trying to kill the lawns or landscaping, suggesting that maybe this year they won't be as lush as they normally are through the conservation measures we're asking. Tom Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Uh, Hello, sir. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, thanks. Um, board members, you're taking the right uh, steps here in with the water conservation ordinance. Um, I'm part of the Marine Conservation League's Climate Action Working Group, and I'm also part of GreenChange.net, which is a network of volunteer online uh, folks sharing information on ways to economically and otherwise sustainably uh, fight climate change. And we want to help you to make MMWD sustainable by helping get out the word and doing demonstration projects on water saving measures. Um, we'd like, you know, we'd like to help. And uh, also with loss of water revenue, we encourage exploring ways to reduce one of your biggest operating costs, which is energy. The energy, California Energy Commission found that in California, water related energy use consumes 19% of the state's electricity, 30% of the natural gas. And, uh, you know, with, with water and energy use interrelation, interrelated, uh, one thing to, to consider exploring is that electric utilities are increasingly moving to um, new early evening time of use fees when water demands are also high. If we, uh, water district customers of all sizes were using less water, especially for landscaping at peak energy use hours, around five to nine in the evening, uh, MMWD could avoid pumping water at the most expensive time of day. Outside water obviously should be very late or very early to avoid the evaporation. And saving water today is a necessary means to both adapt to and mitigate climate change. I applaud MMWD for going for um, all renewable energy with MCE's Deep Green. Um, but the vast majority of, of uh, electricity is still coming. Go ahead and finish that last sentence, I'm sorry. So um, we, we, didn't, we need, to, one of the best ways to get to all renewable energy is to first re reduce our overall electrical demand. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, the next speaker is the Sleepy Hollow Presbyterian Church. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, uh, I'm Beverly Brewster. I'm the pastor at Sleepy Hollow Presbyterian Church, and I'm sitting here with our leader, a volunteer leader of our Justice Garden. And a number of us wrote to the board today because we were not clear on uh, whether the one day a week irrigation would apply to uh, us because we our justice garden grows hundreds of pounds of organic vegetables for hungry people, seniors and children in Marin every year. So I gather from what general manager uh, Ben Horenstein said this evening that uh, our justice garden on the church uh, grounds in San Anselmo would be considered functional landscaping and therefore it would be exempt from the, at least the contemplated one day a week irrigation. But um, I guess my questions would be, uh, is the board contemplating taking any mandatory restrictions that would apply to a vegetable garden such as ours, which is 
uh, 100% dedicated to producing food for hunger relief uh, within Marin County. Um, and if so, what would those be? And then also just, I, I, we did do some research before we peppered you with emails um, to try to understand what the restrictions uh, that could apply to our Justice Garden food production would be. So I, I guess I need to know where the definition of functional landscaping is found and where the, just the easy access to the information about the contemplated restrictions. Uh, is it on the Marin Water Board website? And if so, where? I was not able to find it. And lastly, I want to say, um, I'll just finish my sentence, I'm sorry. Um, I know it's been a long night. We do practice environmental stewardship as a core article of our faith. And uh, we really want to thank you all for your service to the community in this extremely challenging time. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thank you so much. I, I believe you are correct that um, uh, food gardens are exempt, but Ben, can you speak to that more specifically? Yeah, yeah. so specifically, um, there are no provisions before the board tonight that would apply to functional landscaping, and w that is uh, mainly, if not exclusively, defined as um, growing fruit and vegetables um, for consumption. So the restrictions would not apply to the functional where they are uh, focused exclusively the irrigation restrictions on ornamental landscaping and that includes grass and turf. Um, and Ben, one last thing, I think um, the pastor raises a really important question. I think we have not yet made um, made that public, made the definition of functional landscaping publicly uh, clear on the website. Where where do we expect that will be? General Counsel McLean, um, do you have or Carrie? Uh, the, so we do have the the language in the ordinance does refer to ornamental. So um, we, I don't know if we have a specific definition in the code or if we just wanna um, have clarity in um, our um, public outreach that that uh, doesn't include. Um, yeah, I don't think we need it in the code, but I do think we need something clear on the website and in our outreach materials. So maybe I'll leave that to Carrie and Jeannie to work out. I don't see this as a legal issue. I do see it as a very, very important um, uh, public um, information issue. So if we could get that on the website as soon as possible. Okay. All right, the next three speakers are Soren, Joan Brown, and James Krajewski. So Soren. All right, I'm, I'm back. I have three things I would like to uh, uh, point out. I first want to just thank you guys for, I think it's the right thing to do is we, we got to save. There's no way around it. I do have a uh, time with a 40% reduction across the board seems very crude, right? People are using a lot different as, as other people have mentioned before that, you know, the consumption rates are very different from, from user to user. And for people who have saved a lot of water over the time, it's, it's much diff more difficult to, to, to do a 40% reduction, right? You're going from 17 and a half gallon, which I'm not quite there yet, but you know, 40% of that is, 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 is very, very difficult. Whereas if you have a large, you know, lawn and you water it, you know, every day for 20 minutes or whatever the, the standard uh, time is for, for an irrigation controller, it will be very easy to, to, to reduce that. Uh, secondly, you are, uh, the customers have no meaningful tools to monitor consumption, right? We get a, we get a, we get a bill every two months and that's it. Right, it, it it doesn't. There's no real uh, feedback, right? Other than you know going down and crawling into your meter and look at your meter every day or every other day, but that's not really feasible for 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 people, I think. Uh, so that's really back to you on coming up with a better way of of for for, for your customers to have real time feedback. Um, finally, that's really my own personal first world uh, problem. Is I have a pool. And if the water level gets below the, the tile, that's the first 12 or 18 inches, the, the grout will deteriorate and I have to re, um, what's I called, uh, uh, resurface the, the pool, which can be a you know, 40 to $60,000 fee. So what do I do? I ask for a variance or 
um, I prefer that I figure out how to save my, my water rather than you telling me how to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Very quickly, Ben, do you again want to make clear that we're not asking for everybody to reduce their personal consumption by 40%? I think there seems to be a lot of confusion about this, and we're going to need to clarify this in whatever we enact, whatever we enact tonight. Yes, absolutely, President Kohler. The 40% is um, an, what we're striving for as an entire system to reduce the demand we see over the summer on average by 40% with the understanding that there's plenty of folks today that just have an ethos and ability to conserve water to a very high degree and 40% would just simply not be possible. At the same time, there's folks that have expansive yards that their summer demand could go well higher than 40%. And so the a uh, goal we're striving for that's a action-based approach. And that's the information and recommendations we brought to the board in terms of water waste um, prohibitions, additional ones and limitations on irrigation. Those actions are anticipated to bring us down to a 40% reduction. Next speaker. Okay, Joan Brown. Ms. Hello? Brown? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, first, I want to say I really appreciate the tone um, that the board is giving tonight. I was terrified <laughs> about what I might hear tonight. Um, there are two of us living in our household. We are ages 79 and 87. Um, we have been told that because of bad knees, we need to swim instead of walk. Um, this 87 year old is fighting frailty and um, it's really important for him to be able to swim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comment. And let me just say that this is the exactly the kind of situation that is perfect for a variance. And I'm just gonna ask the staff to reach out to you. Okay. All right. After Ms. Brown, I have James Krajewski. Go ahead, James. Hi. Um, I had several comments, but I'm going to limit them just to the comments that I had regarding pools. Um, because if pools can't be filled, refilled, or topped off, uh, there's a problem with structural uh, changes in the pool and significant damage. So the, if they're let go and they can't and they're not refilled, they're going to be full of algae uh, before long and a mosquito breeding place. And I really question the public health implications of that. If you have a bunch of pools scattered throughout Marin that people let go and fill up with algae, and mosquitoes, and you start a whole thing of mosquito-borne illnesses and, or try to control that, you've got a major public health thing, a public health problem. In addition, uh, on this, there's no distinction between covered pools and uncovered pools. Covered pools use relatively little water. They probably use far less water than most landscaping. So why, why are this all thrown into one pool, in essence. And um, this issue of variance is why should all, all, I don't know how many pools there are in Brand, but why should everybody have to apply to a variance simply to keep their pool operable? This is going to be a very costly thing. And it's hard to know without any projections, even what money it would, I mean, what uh, water it would actually save. I think we, that you need to consult with the Marin Public uh, Health Department before you implicate something about pools because of the likelihood that they will become reservoirs for illnesses. Uh, and I would think you should put this off and get more input from pool construction people, uh, homeowners, and the Public Health Department before you do anything about this pool stuff. And certainly separate out covered versus uncovered. 
Thank you. The next speaker is T. Kelly, Ashley, then Chris Shelton. So T. Kelly. You're on mute, T. Kelly. Hello? All right, I'll come back to T. Kelly. Ashley, please. Hi, um, I work in the pool industry, and so I had questions about the topping up off of pools. Um, I know it's been mentioned, but it does become a safety hazard when pools aren't full completely. They would have to shut off their equipment or burn out their equipment, which would be very costly for customers. And then we also have ongoing construction jobs where we need clarification on are we just going to stop abruptly or are we able to finish those type of jobs? Um, so I just need some clarification to let our customers know what their options are, I guess I should say. So those were my questions. Thanks, Ashley. And can you respond to that? I don't think we're calling for a halt on pool construction, are we? I believe the issue as it relates um, is if you're working on a new pool, let's say you're resurfacing it and that work won't be done for a few weeks, is the customer allowed to fill the pool up with the current language? Um, and you can't have an empty pool because that creates a safety hazard. So I believe that's the issue. And um, that would, um, through the current language be handled presumably through the variance and appeal process. Although I and certainly the board members are hearing these comments and thinking, is that the best way to handle the nature of this issue? Okay. Okay, I have T. Kelly, then Chris Shelton and then O'Neill. So T. Kelly. T. Kelly. Okay. All right. Chris Shelton. Mr. Shelton. Good evening. Good evening, board members. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you very much for your time. I know the hour is late, so I'll try to be brief and uh, somewhat summarize some of the past comments because I do think that there is a misunderstanding and misconception. I want to echo uh, board member Bragman's recommendation at the outset, which is uh, to make the easy findings of uh, the drought and then pick off the low hanging fruit, which are uh, open and obvious. And I think you've heard this evening, one of the common threads is that there is a misunderstanding about this 40% reduction. And while I understand the broader scheme of uh, many hands making light work, and trying to achieve across the board a 40% reduction, I think the prohibitions that are outlined in the proposed resolution is what is creating the confusion. And you're hearing that firsthand as it relates to pools and, and the means and methods by which people try to implement conservation. Uh, <laughs> I, I do also agree with some of the past commenters that the staff time and resources that will be allocated to processing variance applications will be disproportionate to the benefit that's ultimately conferred. And with the variance language that is proposed in the resolution, every pool owner in Marin County will be eligible for a variance. Um, the findings are readily made based on the expertise that you've heard from qualified professionals this evening. So, at least for right now, I would recommend that you kind of take a, a page out of the COVID playbook and think about somewhat of a tiered approach. Low hanging fruit now, see how it goes in, in a month or two. If it doesn't work out, then implement more aggressive conservation efforts where you can start to talk about some of these more, frankly, uh, contentious issues like landscaping, irrigation, pools. And that kind of thing. Thank you very much for your time and uh, consideration of this issue. Thank you. 
All right, next speaker is O'Neill, and then the last speaker is Roger Roberts. Go ahead, O'Neill. O'Neill? Where did he go? He's muted. Yeah, he's muted. I know. I'm, I'm asking to, to unmute, but it's not. O'Neill? Well, he would have, him, okay, well, let me try to go to Mr. Roberts. Okay, Mr. Roberts? Roger Roberts? Okay. Um, I, I'm not getting, I'm not getting through, I'm not getting. Yeah, you are. You. I can hear you, sir. Ah, good. There you go. It, the uh, mic is not showing on my screen. Can you still hear me? We yes, can. Uh, a comment which uh, relates to the one day a week uh, plan for watering. Uh, we all know that in Marin, we typically have two or three times of the dry season where we have extreme heat for a period of two, three, sometimes four days. Uh, under those circumstances, how are you going to handle the one day a week mandate for watering? You need to have flexibility. Uh, that that's just not going to work. Thank you. Okay, Roger. Any more comments, Terry? Um, no more. I, I try to okay. get a hold of Mr. O'Neill or Miss O'Neill, okay. but nothing. Well, it's already ten, so and the board still needs to deliberate. So, um, Molly, is this an appropriate time to close the public hearing? I would say it is. Yes, President Kohler. Great, then here's here's my suggestion, just based on what I've heard tonight, and obviously I wanna hear from my fellow board members, there's a few changes I'd like to propose that we make going forward. <clears throat> the first is I think the pool issue is um, challenging. So I'm just gonna propose that we just strike that for now, get more information and come back to it. That's my first suggestion. My second suggestion is um, similarly with the one day a week watering. I think we've heard from a lot of people that they really wanna be figuring out um, their own watering schedule. Um, so at least my thought is that for now, um, we table that. Um, and my third suggestion is that we need to revise the language to make it clear that we are not asking each individual um, account holder to reduce their consumption by 40%, that that is an overarching um, objective for um, the district and that we are asking everybody to conserve um, as appropriate given the restrictions that we've got um, outlined here. Um, that those are those are my three thoughts and the other piece I'm going to throw in here not for consideration for tonight but I'd like to see this come up perhaps at the May 14th meeting when we're considering some other related issues what I'm hearing from everybody is telling me we need to be moving to a budget-based rates um, I've heard from I mean we've all heard from everybody and the consistent theme is don't tell me how to conserve we all I haven't heard anybody say don't conserve I mean so I'm just going to thank everybody who came tonight I know it's late and we've got a hundred of you here and I've, I haven't heard a single person say it's unnecessary to conserve and I don't want to. I've heard everybody say, we're in, we understand the problem, but don't tell us how to do it. Let us figure out our own landscaping, our own pool situation, our own vegetable gardens or whatever it is. And that tells me we need to be moving towards budget brace rates, which basically is where we tell people, um, given your situation, here's your budget and we let them figure it out. So I'm just gonna put that out there for the future. Um, um, but that's that's the direction I'm I'm hearing from our constituents that 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 may make the most sense for this community. So, others, what does everybody else on the board think about how the direction to go for tonight? I basically agree with what you've said. The only thing I would add uh, to the don't consider tonight is the greens and tees for golf courses. I I take that off the list for tonight. Are you suggesting we don't have it? I'd be uncomfortable if we don't ask golf courses to conserve. And those are no, the only- we are asking, We're asking everybody to conserve. That's not the issue. You just said it. The issue is uh, how best to do it. And it's the control issue, uh, whether we let them figure out how to manage to their 40 gallons a day, as opposed to telling them specifically how to do it. It's equivalent to the one day a week issue. Okay, I'm just interested in hearing from the staff on that. Like, 
what does that mean? Because golf courses are a different situation than residences. Well, I would say President Kohler, and I'll, I'm sure Carrie and Ben could speak to this further, but I think we have far fewer golf courses in, in the district than we have pools. Right. Um, and I, I do think there is flexibility intentionally built into the variance provisions that would allow um, for a comparable, compar uh, comparable conservation to happen. So a proposal coming forward that would, show, would allow a golf course to demonstrate that they can conserve a comparable um, savings amount um, with, a, with a different watering schedule with greater flexibility. So I think that is anticipated and probably would not be um, infeasible for staff to navigate with the variance procedure. And I'm sure staff would be um, willing to work with the however many golf courses we have. I don't know the exact number. Not that many. Right. right. If I may, um, so we've been in coordination with with uh, Meadow Club, um, and they are uh, pulling together a smaller group, including Peacock Gap and Mill Valley Golf Course, so that we can um, start to have a conversation around variances. Ultimately, with the goal and the acknowledgement that they want to do their part and step up and you know, um, that they want to pursue the variance process and work with us to reduce their demand. Okay. Great. Other board comments? My turn? Of course. Okay. Um, I, I think the comment um, about using the variance process, um, conserving the variance process so it's the effort is uh, not disproportionate to the benefit was a, a really good comment. And I don't have anything uh, in particular against golf courses, but I do agree with staff's comment that there, it's a small enough cohort of, use, of consumers um, that we could, the variance process would actually probably be a very good thing for them to pursue. The other thing we could build into our golf course regulation would be, let's say, a 30-day uh, period before it kicks in so that we have enough time for staff to, to work with them to make it effective. There's no point in passing something that's just going to be abused or, or, or not followed. So I, I think we can deal with um, the golf course issue flexibly. Um, Overall, yeah, I think we should carve out some of the real thorny issues like irrigation. That is our biggest area of savings and folks have to understand that. But I think for us to put that off until we can sort of get our hands around it better would be a good, a good uh, way to go tonight rather than just trying to cobble something together. And in that regard, I go back to my earlier comment about information. Information is power. And um, we need to be getting information much more frequently than the bi-monthly basis we're billing on. We can do that with our potable water. So I think that's really gotta be an emphasis here. That's one thing we learned from the pandemic, tracing, knowing, <laughs> Knowing where things are is very important. We need to get that feedback from staff on probably a weekly basis and get it out there to the community so that they know as we go through this iterative process of regulating water use that it's not uh, arbitrary. It's actually responding to information that we see out in the community. So, um, I think that's about it. I think, you know, also on, on the pool um, issue, that's probably another one we need to carve out until we really get our hands around it. You know, we may want to consider mandatory covers now, you know, as, as, part, as part of the trade-off maybe as we go forward with pools. But certainly that is a thorny issue as far as maintaining the equipment and also the um, actual physical uh, strength of the pool vessel itself. It, it's, it, they, they don't do well if they're empty. So um, I agree with the, with the President Kohler's suggestion of carving out those three really tough ones, putting those over 
but with the overall message that we will be tracking use and responding to it. And really it's up to our customers, you know, to meet the challenge. Now, and I, what are the three we're talking about cutting out? Uh, irrigation, pools. Uh, what's the third one? It, it was the 40% reduction. And I, I just, if I can speak to that for a second, there is nothing in the, the proposed ordinance that speaks to the 40% reduction. There is um, just a statement in the um, resolution um, declaring water shortage emergencies that, that the district is targeting an overall 40% reduction in total water use. Right, so, so to be clear, my proposal was not that we change any of that language, but just as in public outreach, we make it clearer than we have to date that we are not asking each individual household to reduce by 40%. I don't think we need to change. I'm not proposing that we change the language of either the resolution or the ordinance. Okay. Yeah, I have as the three, what we talked about, the irrigation, the pools, and Director Gibson with the golf courses, and there's been some discussion on that. So I think so far, those are the three that, um, I do, if, if I can mention too, for the public and the board, in the ordinance as drafted now, there is a delay in the enforcement provisions. So um, it is identified that the enforcement provisions would not start until May 1st. So the ordinance would go into effect immediately, but the specific provision regarding any enforcement would not be effective until May 1st. Right, but Molly, it's the 20th, so I don't know that that's meaningful for most people. I, I'm, I'm just pointing it out. I don't know if it meets the, the interest for the golf courses. That's the specific. Yeah, I think they're going to need a little more time. Okay. Yeah. And now, uh, uh, just for clarity, we are cutting the golf courses out for the moment? No, I, I, I'm, we're not suggesting we're cutting them out. I think what we're saying is, well, I don't know. Well, the, the, the limitation to tees and greens, as I understand it, we're already working with uh, some of the golf courses towards a resolution. It seems to me they should be cut out until we get that resolution. I mean. I think it's a problem to tell the public we're asking everybody else to cut back and we're not asking the golf courses. I think we need to, you know, I, I, I appreciate your view Director Gibson, that we won't don't want to be dictating to them about where they cut back, but I'm I don't think we can be asking everybody else to cut back and telling the golf courses they get a pass. I think I well, think I, I, I I think we may be on the same page. I'm simply saying we cut out the restriction that they can only water greens and tees. How they manage it within the larger limitation that's up to them. But, uh, okay. but it's the it's the restriction to only be able to water greens and tees that I. I so, think it's over controlling. Right. So, so Molly, do you feel that there's a way to make a change in real time, or do you feel this needs to be delayed to clear to make the clarification that oh, Director Gibson is proposing? Right. Um, what I did hear from Director Bragman what, what, that we could add in is um, is it is it is a postponement. So we, it would be easy enough to say that um, that particular measure, which is Measure M right now. Um, would we would just put effect, effective date as of May 20th, and then that would allow the golf courses to, to work with staff on um, finding an alternative under the variance procedure. I don't know if that meets uh, uh, Director Gibson's concerns or whether there's something else that we'd want to do. Right. Um, what do you think, Jack? Yeah, that's, a, I think, a good compromise. What, okay. What's the time period you said? Um, it's a month to May 20th. 30 yeah. days. No, that's from fine. Today. That's good. Uh, now, we did talk about a reviewing the whole package at some point relatively soon. Yeah, but I, I, I think we still need to figure out what the package is. And so, can I just ask that we come back to that in a minute, Jack? Once sure. we. Yep, that's good. So, do we have. Con I just want to make sure because we haven't heard from all the directors. Do we have consensus about these three items? Think so for me? Sure, sure. Yeah. Monty? Okay. Yeah. So then the question for you, Molly, is um, are these changes you can make in real time now, or do you feel like you need to bring this back to us at another time? I I believe these are changes I can make in real time, but let, let me read the language um, to the board and the public on the specific provisions. And now we're dealing with um, page two of the draft ordinance. 
section 1304.020, which is the drought water waste prohibitions, um, section one, and then first we'll go to subsection C, um, which deals with decorative water fountains or pools, including the refilling or makeup of any decorative fountain or pool. And then I propose that we would strike for now and the refilling or makeup of any recreational pool or spa. Well, that does seem okay. to do it. Does that work for everybody? So okay. that would take that off. Hearing no objections. Okay, sorry. Our, so we're just taking that out for now. Correct. Wow. There would be a deletion. Um, so then the provision would simply read, um, a prohibition would apply to decorative water fountains or pools, including the refilling or makeup of any decorative fountain or pool. So we're not talking about a recreational swimming pool or spa at all at this point. That's going to be that's going to be carved out, not in the ordinance. Correct. And and revisited, presumably. And revisited. Right. Just as I just, may be the interest of the board. Yes. Yeah. We just, we just need to do more digging on the pool issue, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The next item would be um, the same section, section one, subsection H. Um, I believe that I'm hearing we would want to delete subsection H at this point. The other option would be to um, simply change the number of days for watering and strike as assigned by the district, meaning that there would be no specificity on the number of days. Um, so I, I guess I need a little more feedback from the board as to whether we want to have any um, restriction on irrigation at this point modified, or are we interested in just bringing that entire thing back as a package? Shouldn't we, shouldn't we say that uh, customers are to reduce their irrigation, their water use for irrigation by 40% subject to further uh, regulation by the board as dictated by future demand or future consumption, something like that. Yeah, I think that's the way to say it. Yeah, I would agree. I agree. Okay, so we're changing section H to say, um, ornamental irrigation of ornamental landscape areas and um, are actually or chirp areas shall be reduced by 40%. 40%. Subject to, okay, by 40%. I guess it's implicit that we can come back and revisit it. Of course. So it, it would be a process of amending the ordinance. Um, and and should, should we add, and I, I would just put this out there for the rest of the, of the directors, should we add subject something like subject to um, consumption information, future consumption uh, information. I, I, mean, I will so say that I think that I as just, we propose, it will be difficult for staff. Sorry. Right, I'm sorry, Director Bragman, I didn't mean to no, speak that's up. Okay. That's okay. I was just gonna say, it, I think the ordinance should reflect that we want really the challenge is in our customers' hands and we want them to understand accountability. We, it's, it's gonna depend on, 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 on the information we get as far as consumption patterns. I, I would defer to staff on the technical ability of, of the district to measure the reduction. So I do think that what we can call for it, but I think Marley, that we can enforce it of it. Yes. My recommendation would be on the irrigation piece for the board to direct staff to um, come back to you, having heard your comments, having heard the comments of our customers tonight with some options and give us a bit of time to really think about it. It, it is a complex issue. 
Oh, wait. So are you proposing, Ben, that we delay, that we don't vote on this on this resolution, on this ordinance at all? Oh, no, absolutely no, not. No, I think Sorry. We're strike, we would be striking out specific. any outdoor irrigation prohibition at this point to bring it back. How about just leaving yeah. in outdoor irrigation reduction for now for by 40%? Yeah. I mean, we get, we've we got to get the message out that that's- Right, I'm concerned, right. I mean, we're, we, we, need to, we need to balance between doing nothing and being overly- you know, right. prescriptive in terms of telling people how. So I, I think doing nothing is not really an option since outdoor irrigation is 50% of our water use. That is where we're going to make the difference. So I think just ignoring that is not, is not responsible. The, the, absolutely. I, I don't want us to um, do something tonight. We can always change it. It isn't practical in terms of being able to assess it or monitor it going forward force it as we need to. It is an ordinance. So um... let me suggest this. So here's here's the advantage of, of being a lawyer. Why don't we go with something that's a little vague and see how it goes, um, uh, which is um, something along the lines of, uh, you know, um, that we request that uh, that outdoor irrigation is to be reduced um, by 40% to the, to the best efforts using, you know, using best efforts. It's a little, it's a little wiggly, but, um, I think it gets the message across without being overly prescriptive. And that does give us the opportunity to then come back and, um, see how we're doing. Yeah. Or to the extent practicable, something like That's that. Good. Right. I, I kind of like the idea of best, you know, like requesting best efforts. That's obviously not enforceable, but I think it's an important public message. And I did want to note, just so the board understands this one final point, and Lucy or Carrie can correct me if I'm slightly off here, that the 40% is an average system-wide reduction. We were able to reach 40% in our calculations, assuming a higher percent on reducing outdoor irrigation by going to one day or perhaps two days a week. So the overall goal by saying 40% on outdoor irrigation um, will be maybe closer to 30% overall. But in, I, I'm making that last number up because I haven't done the calculations, but I just wanted the board to appreciate mm -hmm. um, it shifts a little bit. On the other hand, um, you know, 40% on outdoor irrigation at this point, I think is symbolic, but a very critical, and I appreciate the pushback on me of doing something tonight, a very critical symbolic um, kind of comment and direction to our customers and staff, obviously will be thinking about this a lot and bringing other ideas to the board as we need to, as we see how we are able to achieve the measures that we're looking for. So tonight is not the end of the story, right? Yeah. So I, I think the suggestion is probably a good one. I just wanted you to fully appreciate the distinction of that direction versus what we had. Yeah, I think this is really extremely important because you are sharing with us that we're tinkering with the with the calculations that that have what has been presented tonight was carefully thought through and 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 went into projections about where we might land at the end of this year so we are changing this i think that we need to understand what are the likely projected results of whatever we adopt tonight in addition to how we will how we will assess this quickly in the near future to see whether we are really on target um, to achieve what we need to in order to ensure that we have a safe and reliable water supply right. come this next winter, should we have another really dry year. Right. Um, yeah, I, and I also think it's important for us to distinguish what we need to put in an ordinance versus what we put out to the public, right? I think it is, right. I mean, really, I'm, I'm very alarmed by people who have already conserved and are already down to you know 17 or 20 or whatever it is, GPCD feeling that, Oh my God, now I've got to find another 40%. So I, I don't think there's a need to address that in the ordinance or the resolution. I do think it's essential, critical that we address it in our uh, public outreach and messaging. 
And, you know, I know that's a hard thing to enforce. Like, how do we know who's already reducing? I mean, we've got a sense of that given our tier one customers, but I do think we need to send this message very far more effectively than we have to date. Isn't that where we're looking at to ask people to, to consume less than 60 gallons per day per person, which is, it, which is an average over the month. I'm trying to get it at, at, at what Director Kohler is trying to say, which is if you're already at 17 gallons per day, you're great. Thank right. you. You've already We're not done asking you to your do anything. job. <laughs> yeah. done. So we we have we, we the forty percent reduction is is too variable based on on what someone's consumption is. So can we can we say forty percent and forty percent? We hope will get you to it, the target is that you, that should get to less than sixty gallons per day per person per household. Wait, wait a second. What we were talking about was irrigation. We were talking about irrigation, exactly. I know, but, yeah, not, but, not, uh, but we're, we're looking for total, but, but for a household, uh, for, for somebody's household, they, they're not going to, they're going to look at what their water consumption is at their meter or if they have, you know, some other device. So how are we helping people to actually see whether they're, if they're trying, whether they're actually achieving what we're asking? Right. Um, I think the purpose of the ordinance is to set a goal for people. Well, but, but how do it, they measure it, it's that? It's shifting. This is why, on some of these, a bit more discussion following staff analysis, because we're kind of shifting from a action based ordinance that staff has calculated what savings we expect from those actions which is the 40% overall, not intended. And I appreciate certainly with the comments, the confusion some of that created that we're asking folks individually to conserve 40%. Because what we had brought to you board members was if someone has an expansive yard and they historically irrigate five days a week, and we do have customers that just, five days a week, irrigating big expansive lawns. If you went down to one day a week, as presumably using the same time, that's an 80% reduction in your outdoor and maybe an overall 60% reduction in your summer usage that would balance someone that's already at 20 gallons a day and doesn't have much room to conserve. So this was really focused not on individual budgets. And I certainly appreciate the comments that that's something for us to think about longer term to get to, but an action-based approach to if everyone takes these actions. And so I personally, I, I like the idea we move forward with the two resolutions. We move forward with the modified list of water waste um, prohibitions staff comes back at the first meet the next board meeting with ideas on irrigation we certainly heard the board and appreciate that's an area we have to focus on it's going to rain sunday hopefully that delays um, customers turning on their sprinklers and it gives us a little bit of time and we can bring a thoughtful set of options with a recommendation to the board I, I, ben, I have to say, I'm so sorry. Maybe it's because it's late, but you've lost me. Are you, are you suggesting we do not go forward with the ordinance? No, I, I'm suggesting we do go forward with the two resolutions and the ordinance, and we limit the ordinance to the water waste restrictions. No washing your car in the driveway, and okay. those okay. set. So we okay. we pull out the pools, which seem to be something the entire board supports, and we take the modify the language on the golf courses in accordance with the general counsel's recommendation that I believe Director Gibson right, right. supported. Right, and, and what are you saying about irrigation? Irrigation, the board would direct us by the next board meeting to come with a set of recommendations on an action-based approach that um, based on all the discussion and comments that we've heard. Okay, so you're saying that for tonight, you're recommending that we simply pick, take that out of the ordinance that we're approving tonight? Yes, under the belief- the bottom line, Ben. I just need to get to the action. So we're taking, your, that's yes. your recommendation. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna need, Molly, I'm gonna need you so that we're all clear about this. Can you read what we are, what's being proposed now for the ordinance? Yes, I can. 
So I repeat that under section 1304020 1C, we have deleted and the refilling or makeup of any recreational pool or spa. That's the pool and spa refilling issue. Um, and then we're going to delete section 8H, which is the um, irrigation section. It's it's gonna, we're gonna be bringing back specific irrigation action items and we're gonna be deleting that. And then I also have section M, we would add as of May 20, 2021, golf course irrigation with potable water. So the prohibition would not go into effect until May 20th. Um, and that would allow um, Carrie to work with our golf course owners to come up with a, a, a variance procedure. So there is a provision under the variance that they could have comparable savings in other ways that would allow flexibility for them. Okay, so I think I got that. Is everybody, is, are my fellow board members, any further comment on those proposed changes to the resolutions of the ordinance before us? Should, should we include, uh a recommendation for folks to reduce irrigation to the extent practicable now. I yes. don't think that's I don't think that's the I don't think that's the purpose of ordinances. I think and besides we're talking about you guys bringing this back to the next board meeting that's in a week. I I think a recommendation could be done by resolution. Okay. I don't think we want to change the ordinance to add in a recommendation. I think the idea that I think okay. President Cole is correct that the ordinance we're trying to be very specific and concrete, yeah. and um, I think that we can bring back more specific concrete measures at the next meeting. And where would you put the language in the resolution? As far as a recommendation, yeah. Um, I, I, I'm just going to ask Larry. Can can we? We're only talking about a matter of, are we talking about two weeks or one week, Ben, for this? I, I believe we're talking about two weeks. So it's okay. the first board meeting so, in May. Larry, in Thank the interest you. of in the interest of just making sure that we're done. meeting our, our legal requirements here, I don't I don't know that a recommendation or resolution is going to make that much of a difference in two weeks. So if you're comfortable, I'm I'm gonna make a friendly amendment and suggest we just let that ride for the next two weeks. Okay. Any other board comment on this before I call for a wise begin calling for the various votes we have to do? Okay, then I am looking for a motion on the resolution to declare a water shortage emergency. Of approval. Second. Second. And then Molly, we have had our public hearing. Do we need to have more public comment on this before we vote? We do not, President okay. Kohler. We have opened and closed the public hearing now. Okay, just checking. Um, so I'm looking for a roll call on the resolution to declare a water shortage emergency. Director Bragman. Aye. Director Gibson. Aye. Director Russell. Aye. Director Schmidt. Aye. And President Kohler. Aye. I am now looking for a motion on the resolution of the board of directors declaring a water shortage emergency and calling for the implementation of mandatory water conservation measures as amended as general counsel has reviewed just now. President Kohler, for clarification, can I can I suggest that we're moving to this the second resolution, which is the resolution for the board to defer implementation of the emergency water rate. And then we can move for, forward with the, the ordinance as amended. Okay. I thought I was looking at that resolution, but okay, that's fine. Uh, okay. I just wasn't clear. I'm sorry. I'm just reading it right off of what you've got in the board packet. Okay. Move approval. approval. Second. Okay, we need a roll call. Director Bragman. Aye. Director Gibson. Aye. Director Russell. Aye. Director Schmidt. Aye. And President Kohler. Aye. I'm now looking for a motion to approve ordinance 449 um, as revised as um, indicated by general counsel at this meeting. Move approval. Guys, we need a second. I'll, we can't record. I guess I'll second it. No, I think <laughs> I, <laughs> I know it's late, but we can do this. Oh, I thought I'd be a third. 
<laughs> Director Bradley. I'll be the third. I'll do the second. Okay. That may get confusing with our names, but thank you. <laughs> That's all right. But for sure, let's keep laboring this, guys. <laughs> I like to do that. Indeed. <laughs> Director Bregman. Aye. Director Gibson. Aye. Director Russell. Aye. Director Schmidt. Aye. And President Kohler. Aye. Thank you, everybody. I know it's 1030. It's been a long night. I want to thank everybody who has hung in there and participated with us this evening. And I want to thank my fellow board members and everybody on team. And quite horribly, we have more to do, but we're almost done with the agenda. <laughs> President Kohler, I have a uh, proposal. We have okay. um, the three next items are positions. These are all budgeted positions. These are routine filling positions. I could... Um, with the general counsel's okay, can we consolidate all these in one action? And I could just roll through them quickly. Yes, I think so, that's fine as long as the uh, board is fine with that. I, I, I just, okay, we're gonna come back to the ordinance in a couple weeks, okay? Could uh, council give us a short memo on a uh, water hookup moratorium? Our authority yes. so okay and and look at the swanson case please do yes <laughs> it was it was my water law exam many decades ago so i'm still traumatized by it well okay, it, was so it, it was yeah, upheld it was upheld yeah so okay. okay so with president kohler and the boards okay per general counsel we'll consolidate item seven eight nine um, item seven is uh, summer helpers, interns, watershed aid positions. These are really um, very cost effective and important positions that we bring on every year. Uh, a lot of fuel reduction work goes into those as described um, in the staff report with the costs as noted that's budgeted in the staff report. Item eight is bringing on a um, control technician position to replace a retiree. This is a key pos position that helps support our SCADA system, which is our eyes and ears in the field at the cost. It's a budgeted position as described in the staff report. And item nine is our water quality lab manager by the title itself, obviously a very critical position as described as a staff report. It is budgeted with a salary as noted in the staff report. So with that, I would take any questions unless the board wants to proceed with a motion. Is uh, ben, ben, is Chris Nanny retiring? Yes, yes he is. Okay. It's a key position and it's gonna be a very important recruitment. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I would move approval. I mean, is that, I guess we have to have public comment, but. Uh, yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, I need a second. Second. Is there any public uh, comment on this item? I do not see any hands raised. Great, then we need, is there any further board comment on this item? Then we need a vote, vote, we'll call vote. Director Bragman. Aye. Director Gibson. Aye. Director Russell. Aye. Director Schmidt. Aye. And President Kohler. Aye. I think we're there. Anything else, Ben? Uh, no, that's it. We just have future meetings, and I believe that's in accordance with the calendar. Um, no changes to identify to the board. Back to you, President Kohler. Oh, wait, hold on. We do need to figure out the 10-year uh, the financial plan workshop three. I have not received... Uh, many of your responses, I only think I got two. And so the workshop three, 10 year financial plan, I have the dates for either May 12th or May 13th. So can you please let me know which ones um, you're available or if we can solidify that right now, if you have time. What were the two dates again? Uh, May 12th and May 13th. May 12th is a Wednesday, May 13th is a Thursday. Right. Um, I. May 13th is better for me, but I have a medical appointment that's not done till 930. So I would just need it to be after that. Okay. Can everyone else do May 13th or? 
after 9.30? Or is there another date? 10 to noon. Sure. I, I could do either day. I have, okay. a, I, have a, I have a meeting at 6 p.m., so. Uh, we'll, we'll 12, is, 12 is challenging for me. Okay, so I have two. Uh, so two for May 13th between 10 and uh, 10 and noon. Anyone else? Um, that works for me. Director Russell? You're muted mm -hmm. now. Where can't hear you. I'm good, either one. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll um, confirm then. May 13th, 10 to 12, that's a Thursday. Thank you. And that's all I have. Way to manage us, Molly. I mean, uh, Terry. Good job. Okay. Unless anybody has anything else, now that it is the middle of the night, we are adjourned. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Take care.